Alright, welcome. This is going to be a ranked allied game. It's actually my last ranked allied game of season 10. The game actually ended, I think, the day after season 10 ended. So it turned into a custom game. It's against uh, TN General, which might be Tennessee General, I don't know. So I don't know exactly what rank he was. He was gold for the Axis powers for season 10, but I don't know what number he was. So with that, Let's get right into the gameplay. All right, Russia round one, standard purchase, four infantry, two tanks, and we're gonna do the 912. pretty standard so let's run it Wait a minute. All right. So combat was it was atrocious. I had an immaculate West Russia. I didn't lose anybody, but I got absolutely slaughtered in Ukraine. I retreated with one tank and my two fighters because I didn't think that they were going to live. I hate retreating out of Ukraine. I think it's really set you back as Russia, but I didn't know what else to do. So I um, I'm not sure it's going to be a very long game. But uh, we can only do so much, so we're going to retreat everybody from Russia. I just don't know if we can hold this. He's going to be able to tag it with what? Uh, tanks, fighters. Infantry, let's see, no, uh, one infantry or two if you bring some from here. All right. We'll see if we can hold it. Man, it's ugly. Okay, it's a 30% battle. All right, we'll keep it. We'll do it that way. All right, that's a merciful end to Russia round one. I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round one. All right, United Kingdom round number one. So... This is the game where we had a terrible Ukraine. We had to retreat with only one tank. He actually did something interesting. He he bought two tanks, three artillery, three infantry, and a destroyer. He used his battleship and transport in the med to take Gibraltar and kill my cruiser. He had a great C-Zone 7 where he only attacked with five units. He sent one sub to C-Zone 10. Thankfully, it died. But he only sent five units here and he still ended up with uh, a victory and a cruiser left over. And he mobilized the destroyer to seize home five. And he put all six of his fighters, because we had such a disaster as Ukraine, he has that extra fighter alive. 
So <clears throat> I did the math on all of the, a lot of this stuff because basically a sea line is set up, right? So you can attack with one infantry and a tank, a cruiser to bombard, and six fighters. And if he sacks planes, he's going to take England. Uh, especially if I don't deal with the battleship here. There's no way, I don't have enough units where I can kill all this stuff. So my purchase was a standard kind of with, with um, UK, three infantry and two, art, and two fighters. Usually the infantry go into um, India, but this time they're going to go into United Kingdom. So India is going to be way behind the eight ball um, quickly. The only good thing about this move here is that I can save my aircraft carrier, which is probably going to be needed. So first things first, we're going to take this via the Blitz. We're going to take our cruiser and one fighter and try to kill that. And then we're going to take our destroyer, our bomber, and our two fighters and try to kill the battleship. This was smart too by taking Gibraltar. I can't use... Well... I can't use my American fighter, so I can't I can't wait and use the destroyer, a fighter, and a bomber from America and try to kill this battleship because I can't land anywhere. So basically I have to choose the lesser two evils, which is or the worst of two evils, which is I'm gonna take the battleship out and then just try to hang on with this. But I'm gonna press forward um, with Russia. I don't know if that's going to work. I'm not sure if it's been if it's tried it, but it looks like he just came online, so maybe uh, it'll, he'll do it. And I think that's all the combat I want to do. So let's get it done. Alright, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway because if I picked the bomber or the destroyer, because of course the battleship hit twice. So our fighters are going back to England. We're going to take this tank. And we're going to send it down to Africa. Move this guy forward. This guy's going to India. Our aircraft carrier is going to 17. Our transport will go to 17. Our oh, I can't move the tank. I already did. This fighter will go to Szechuan. Oh, I wonder if I should send that fighter to Szechuan. He's got one fighter there. Those two can't get there. That one can't get there. This one can. And the bomber here. Four. What the bomber can do it. So two fighters and a bomber. Ah, why not? Let's try it. He can send two fighters and a bomber. I'll have three fighters and two infantry there. That's not bad. And then we'll go here. Send that guy. Send that guy. Pick up New Zealand and go that way. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Transjordan guy probably needs to go back towards India. Let's not, though. Let's send him forward. And, all right, okay, we're already sending those back in there, okay. Oh, yeah, this guy's going to go down here. I think that's it. All right. All right, we're going to put our two fighters and our three infantry into United Kingdom. Which kind of sucks. But, uh... Uh, what's our... It's a 97 to hold. So... Not great, but... Uh, I think given the options that we had, it's probably the best option. At least until I can get some American Navy in the Atlantic. So we'll see what Japan does. And that'll do it for United Kingdom round number one. And I'll see you guys back for USA round one. All right, United States round number one. So Japan, he did Pearl Harbor and was very successful Pearl Harbor. Uh, he got four hits, I got three hits. So he lost his ships, but he, in a plane, he kept his fighter, his bomber. And then he took uh, Anway, Yunnan, and Burry. And his purchases were another transport, a destroyer, a bomber, and I think four infantry. A one infantry. A bomber, a transport, a destroyer, and one infantry. So he could only shuttle two troops over here, or, or four troops maximum next turn, so that's not going to be um, too terrible early. Uh, I've decided that for this game I'm going to try to totally commit to shipping United States troops through Africa all the way into Persia. So all we're going to do is set up a shuck from uh, east coast of America to Morocco. And it's going to be an eight unit shuck. Um, it's going to start with eight units. And we're going to start landing in, in uh, round number three. The idea is by round number eight to have a sizable stack in trans. Um, with a lot of Americans because we're going to have to push Japan out by then uh, so and then I'm going to have to just let uh, United Kingdom I guess deal with slowly building up here I'm not sure how I'm going to do that because of these six fighters which but hopefully if I make some inroads with Russia he'll have to move these six fighters out of here and then I can start perhaps doing a navy but there's no way right now that I can do it absolutely no way so for America we went ahead and bought uh, two transports a destroyer an aircraft carrier and an artillery and then we banked two IPCs so we spent 40 this turn we're gonna spend 42 next turn 38 in round 3 and 38 every round after that until we start taking territory if everything goes well but obviously I'm gonna have to deal with this German stuff here uh, but not right now. So, America, for the combat, does not have any combat moves in round one. So, we're not going to do any. Alright, for the non-com. This just kills me here because 
Uh, if you know your history, this was exactly the point of Pearl Harbor. Japan wanted to knock the United States out of the war. And every time I grab my Navy and flee the Pacific, I always think that they've actually done what they wanted to do, which is kick America out of the Pacific War. And I hate it, but it seems to be uh, a better strategy, or at least more effective than the KJFs I've done so far. So for the non-com, we're going to send a cruiser up there. We're going to send our transport, our destroyer, and our battleship down here. We're going to send a one plane here. We're going to send the other plane to sea zone. Uh, I'm sorry, we'll send them to east coast of America. We're going to move this guy forward. Actually, no, we won't. We're going to move these two guys forward. Actually, we don't even need to do that either. We can actually move them this way. And we'll move this guy this way. The whole idea is we're going to have enough land troops after this turn to make our first landing, but we're not making it until turn three. So in turn two, these guys in America can just slide over here to uh, central U.S. and they can be picked up in C-Zone 11. Uh, this fighter will go into 11. Our bomber will go to England. And what else? Oh yeah. We'll send our fighter to India. And we'll send these two guys back to Kazakh. I think that's it for America. All right, the aircraft carrier, the destroyer, two transports, and the artillery. Actually, I could even put the artillery in uh, Western U.S. Because it doesn't really matter. They just have to go over here in round two. Let me put a note. Just to remind me to move these land units here so that they can be picked up by the four transports that we're going to have for round number three. All right. That is going to be it for America. All right, for uh, Russia, because he backed off here and because we had such a great West Russia with no losses and he didn't attack uh, the Caucasus we're going to buy a third fighter for Russia and then all infantry and the reason we're not buying any artillery is because we're making 23 money so if we bank one we'll have 24 to start next turn and we can either buy 8 infantry or 6 artilleries if he decides to stack West Russia then we can hammer it in round 3 which we might have to do. So that's what we're gonna do for Russia. For the Russian combat, we're gonna take two units. This is the most important battle, and one fighter. And then we're gonna take one infantry and another fighter and see if we can take both of these. This one here we really have to have. We really, really, really have to have it. If, if we don't win in Bellow, it's fine. Um, we'll take a tank out of the equation, and we're going to move all this stuff up to West Russia anyway, so we'll be okay. And I know about this already, so I can archive that. There we go. Let's just hope these two battles go well.
Wow, that combat was pretty good. Three rounds of combat in Velo, and we did not lose the attacking infantry. We did lose one in Ukraine, but that's okay. We planned it on anyway, and all we're doing really is blocking the tanks from hitting any of this stuff. So our fighters go into West Russia. Our tanks, everything actually goes into West Russia. But now we're not so worried about it because all he can hit it with is one tank, one infantry. Um, a one tank, one infantry, and six fighters. So he still can use... Oh, he, yeah, he could use the six fighters because he can land in uh, Karelia. We'll take this guy here. Actually, no. We'll move both of these guys here because we're moving this guy back. We're moving these four guys back. This guy's going into the Caucasus. And our tanks will move up into West Russia as well. That's all I want to do. Yep. Okay. All right. We are going to put three infantry in the Caucasus and a fighter and two infantry. Actually, you know what? No, let's not do that. Let's put the fighter and and three infantry in the Caucasus, and then we'll put uh, two infantry into into Russia. So we'll actually have a fighter here. What do you want to go and attack that with it? No. The Coxes are safe from air power anyway right now. I'm just wondering. I think I want to put them here in case I need to use them for something else. I don't think I have to at this point in time, but it might be nice to have them here in case uh, we need to use them in conjunction with this. We might be able to use them here to hit uh, Sing Kang and still fly him back. So it might be nice to have them in range. We probably should have left the two West Russia ones too since uh, he can't even attack this with anything. But we didn't for now. So that's going to be it for Russia round number two. And I will see you guys back for United Kingdom round number two. All right, United Kingdom round number two. So Germany bought a tank, five infantry, and five artillery. Two artillery he mobilized to Karelia and everything else went into Germany. He advanced, uh, stacked Bello, took Ukraine, and then sent his cruiser into C-Zone 12. Not exactly sure why that is. Maybe so I can't get my transport back to C-Zone 10, maybe? I don't know. And sent his destroyer into C-Zone 8. Which I guess, so I can't take France that way, but I could always land in 14 and take France. So I, I'm not exactly sure what he's doing. I can't drop a fleet because of these five fighters yet. And I did the numbers on this and I can get this defense up to about, I can get this defense to 82% to defend. So if he wants to take a 17% battle for the game, then I, I'm going to let him do it. So, But I'm going to have a lot of shit in here uh, at the end of Russia's turn for the beginning of round three. But because I can't drop a fleet, um, I went ahead and just bought three tanks, two infantry, and another plane. Two tanks and a plane are going into India, and then I'm going to put a tank and the remaining infantry into United Kingdom. We are going to set up so that we eventually can start landings immediately. It's not gonna be immediate, it's gonna be in a couple turns. But I'm gonna let the Americans kill the cruiser and the destroyer. 
So the Americans are going to take care of that. So I just need to kill this transport. Because those are going to West Russia. And that is all the combat. I'm not doing any other combat this turn with the United Kingdom. As weird as that sounds, but I'm not going to do it. All right, for the non-com, our Africa stuff is going to move forward. Our fighters are going to West Russia. These fighters are going to West Russia. We're going to put this tank in Persia. Just for now. He's probably going to come back to deal with this. But right now, he's going to stay in, in Persia. And then our fleet here, these guys are going up to Brazil. Our submarine is going into and we'll send our submarine to Hawaii. And then our cruiser is going up to Brazil. Our sea zone 22. I'm not worried about this because these guys will be gone. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. And that's pretty much United Kingdom's turn. So let me mobilize. We'll put the fighter and two of the tanks in India. And then two guys and a tank into United Kingdom. And that is going to be the end of United Kingdom's turn. And I'll see you guys back for United States' turn. All right. America round number two. So Japan bought a transport, an infantry, and artillery, and an industrial complex. Industrial complex went into Kwangtung. Everything else went into mainland Japan. Uh, then he advanced, obviously, since I backed out of Soviet Far East and Yakut, he took both of those. And then he advanced into Sinkang and advanced into Sichuan. So, because I'm going to do the uh, prepared strategy of sending guys to Africa, we already planned out our buy for America, which was a destroyer, an aircraft carrier, and another transport, and a fighter, and one infantry. So we're gonna get ready to, to land eight units in Africa in round three. And then we're gonna to have to deal with the advancing uh, Japanese troops here. I gotta run the numbers because I think with only three transports, one of which is out of position here, he can't do Japan round three timing on India. Maybe, maybe he can. I gotta run the math here. We'll see what happens after I stack West Russia if Germany decides to take that 17% uh, battle or whatever. And I'm debating. I'm considering since uh, Russia has 28 IBCs to buy 7 artillery. Just so I have some punch with all my infantry and start uh, hitting back. I don't know. I think I might. Or I guess I, maybe I could do a fighter and six infantry. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but what I do know is that we have to clear the cruiser here and the destroyer here. And the only thing we can attack the destroyer with is the bomber and the two fighters. Everything's going back to England. The battleship. The destroyer. And these two destroyers. All the destroyers can attack it. And actually, this cruiser can too. So he's got nothing that can reach C Zone 11 or C Zone 10. Right? Right.
all this stuff here, the land units have to go over to uh, Central uh, United States so that we can transport everything over to Africa next turn. And let's see, I think that's all we want to do for the fighting. So let's get that done. Hopefully we don't lose any planes. Of course we did. All right, for the non-com, our two fighters land in England. Uh, this fighter will go to West Russia. These two guys will go to the Caucasus. <clears throat> uh, this fighter will go into C-Zone 11. Another transport will go into C-Zone 11. All of these units will move over. to Central uh, America. Not really Central America, Central United States. All right. All right, another transport destroyer. Aircraft carrier, fighter, and one infantry. All right, that's it for United States round number two. And we'll move on to Russia round three. All right, Russia round three. So with Russia, we bought seven artilleries like we thought about, just to give us some punch. So this sucks, we're just giving up a lot of ground here, but right now we don't really have enough to push back yet. So we're gonna have to figure out a way though to, I'm gonna stack this this turn so that we have an 87% chance to hold against Germany in round three. But then I might have to consider in round four backing off. And uh, I hate to abandon it, but we'll have to see where we're at in terms of. Let's see, what if I get it down to 16 infantry? So the only combat move we're going to do is we're going to take three guys. and three fighters and hit Ukraine. And then can I get this up to 17? Uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right, so I can do it. Man, it's gonna be thin. All right, let's get that done. All right, attacking fighters have not been going well lately, but I did get enough hits to kill Ukraine. Our three fighters go back there. We're going to move two guys from there. We're going to move one guy from the Caucasus. We're going to move one guy from Archangel. We're going to move one guy to Archangel and three guys into Novo. 
I'm sorry, that's not Novo, that's Vologda. He has a nice little bit here that can attack this. But he has no tanks. I have one tank here, but it's not in range of Russia yet. So, hopefully, I mean, it's only round three. We got to start getting uh, getting some troops from America into the game. So, we're gonna start landing in round three and keep keep up and start pumping out eight eight units a turn into Africa and send them across uh, into the Middle East. So. And hopefully I can get him to move some of these fighters into a position where I can start uh, dropping a navy for United Kingdom. So let's finish the non-com. 17, 2, 2, 4, 3, which makes 10 fighters. 3, 9, 10, and 2, 8, guys. All right. So that's it. We'll mobilize all seven artilleries. Into Russia. That way we can use them here in Novo if he advances. We can use them here in Kazakh. We can use them in West Russia. Uh, we can use them everywhere. So that's why we're putting them all in Russia. Now our money is really dwindling now with Russia, so we, we're gonna have to start uh, being careful with our purchases. So that's gonna do it for Russia round three, and I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number three. All right, United Kingdom round number three. So Germany, believe it or not, bought a destroyer, four infantry, two tanks, and two artillery. Two infantry got mobilized to Karelia, two to Italy, two tanks and two artillery into Germany. And he put the destroyer in 15. I guess the the reason why he put the destroyer in 15 is so I can't use these guys here to take Ukraine with infantry? Like an infantry and an artillery? I guess. I, I think it was kind of a waste of money. But... It is what it is. Unfortunately for me, I'm, in order to do what I want to do, I'm going to have to sack this transport. I didn't really want to, but I've run the numbers on India and West Russia, and I can get about an 83% to defend on both. So 83% on India and 83% on West Russia this turn and then next turn I will have enough where I can drop a fleet um, for England and start landings so another thing we're gonna do which I hate doing well first things first we're gonna take this guy here go to 13 and take Morocco and then I hate to do this, but we're going to use our tank, all these planes, and this plane. And try to try to either take this or just kill it so that USA can walk in. Or even Russia can use a tank and uh, do that. And I might do that because Russia's probably going to need the money. Um, more than likely, Russia's going to probably need the money. I hate doing this, but until I can get USA into the game here, which should be, we're starting landings this turn, round three, I got to do what I got to do. So we're going to do that. God willing, he gets no hitbacks. That would be fantastic. But the way my dice have been going, I may even lose a plane, which I really don't want to do. But we have to get three planes in India this turn in order to keep it. And then we're going to move our sub up here to 64 and try to stealthily take out one of his things, or at least make him move stuff back here to guard it. And that's all the combat we're going to do, so let's do it. All right. 
So unfortunately, we did lose the tank, which sucked. But we're going to move three planes to India and four planes to uh, West Russia. Let's see here. Look at my India defense. I got uh, one, seven, three. Oh, did I say what I bought? I don't think I did. I bought uh, three artilleries and two fighters. The artilleries are going into India, and then the fighters go to uh, United Kingdom so we can drop the fleet next turn. So our cruiser is going to move here to 13. This transport is going to go up to 10. Um, we're going to grab a guy. We're going to take this transport, go to 34. Pick up a guy, go to 35, drop him in India. We're going to move our tank up to Persia. I'm sorry, we're going to move it up to Transjordan. So he can go into India next turn. Or he can go to Kazakh if we decide to abandon India, which I would hate to do this early. But if my defense is correct, one AA gun, seven infantry, three artilleries, two tanks, and three fighters, it's 82% to hold. And with America moving into C zone three, 13 this turn to land a bunch of troops here, I can replace my West Russia fighter with one of these fighters, or both of them. Actually, what do I got? Seven, eight? I've got four, seven, eight. I've already got eight fighters. 10 fighters gets me 83%. 9 fighters gets me... Uh, wow, only 73. So I need the fighters. So they both got to go in there. Man, I don't know if I give them a 20... Yeah. They both got to go in there. But we can actually put an American here and take this with America this turn. And then add troops to West Russia. So we should be all right, actually, on that front. I wonder if we should move. Yeah, let's do this. Let's move one guy and one artillery. No, we won't move the artillery. We just got to keep this long enough so we can start moving troops over. All right. Oh, yeah, and our subs got to go here to 64 so we can get rid of this note. And we already put three fighters in India. We already moved that to India. All right. All right, I think that's it. All right, our three artilleries go into India, and our two fighters go into the United Kingdom. All right, and we're up to 31 in income for at least one turn. And I think he's going to leave these guys in Africa, otherwise they might have moved. But since they didn't, they're going to have a lot of Americans to deal with in a very short period of time. So... All right, that's going to do it for United Kingdom round three, and I'll see you guys back for United States round number three. All right, United States round number three. So Japan bought six infantry, uh, two artilleries, and two tanks, put the two tanks in Kwangtung and everything else in mainland Japan. He sent two bombers to raid Russia, lost a bomber, and did two IPCs of damage. And then he took everything, moved everybody forward, and took all my undefended territories to get on my doorstep here. All that was anticipated. I'm guessing, I don't know, we've done the math on this. I did the math on India, and I can hold India against what he can attack with right now. Especially once I drop three more infantry in there, it's going to be like 100%. Or 90, I think. 90, I don't know. 
but I don't think that's his plan. If he, he put the six guys here, I think he's just going to grab them and bring them over here and start start uh, shuttling units over and stacking. Um, West Russia here and Russia. So here's the problem is keeping Russia safe, right? So I did the math. It's going to be kind of a risk. But I did the math, and if he attacks with everything he has with Japan, plus his four bombers and his and his I mean, his four fighters and his bomber, I'm going to put six fighters in here before Japan's turn, and eleven infantry, and that will hold ninety-seven percent. And if it doesn't effing hold, then I, it is what it is, because I need to keep this at least this turn. I'll back out of it round four. I'll probably back out of it so I can start repelling this shit but we're going to hold it for one more turn so that United Kingdom can start making landings on fr in France and then we're going to drop a fleet in round 4 with United Kingdom and we're going to make landings so with USA we already had this scripted all we bought with USA was 2 more transports and 8 more infantry and because now we'll have the uh, we'll have the shuttle going into Africa so for our combat, we are going to take Ukraine with one guy. And then, I think that was it. I think that was all the combat. Yep, I think that was the combat. All right. All right, for the non-com, our American guy here is going into Russia. Our American fighter is going into Russia. Okay, to replace them, these two American fighters are going to West Russia. All right. All right, now, our artillery, our tank, our artillery, Three guys and two guys. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I want to take artillery, tank, artillery, three guys and two guys. I'm taking five guys. We're going to sea zone 13 with four transports dropping all eight guys off in season 13 I'm sorry in Morocco our battleship goes to 13 our destroyers our cruiser our aircraft carriers our fighters and our other destroyer everything goes into season 13 I think that's it. We'll have four transports and eight guys here at the end of this turn. All right. Man, I, why do I feel like I'm missing something? I don't know. I'll find out soon enough. All right. two transports and our eight infantry goes into eastern United States all right and that's it for America's turn for Russia's turn we are going to repair one um, piece of damage and then we're going to buy seven infantry. And then for the combat move. We are going to take this infantry. 
one artillery, and our three fighters, and try to knock out Karelia, and see how that works. I'm praying we at least get two hits and kill the units, because I did a lot of calculations based on these guys being dead, especially in moving the fighters around, because it makes a difference. Look at the map notes one more time. Uh, okay, that one can be gone. That one we need. That can be gone. That one can stay because we got to move these guys to Pologda or to uh, Russia. All right. Let's see. Where's my defense of West Russia here? Uh, two AA guns, 17 infantry, eight artillery, four tanks, and eight fighters. And that's an 88% chance to live. All right, let's do this combat. Okay, that was the best rolls I've ever gotten. Everyone hit. <laughs> Everyone hit in the first round of combat. That is amazing. So two fighters go back to West Russia. One fighter goes into regular Russia, correct? One USA fighter, one Russia fighter, round four. Okay, that's what we're in. These guys go back to Russia. These seven guys go forward into West Russia. And I think that's it. I'm going to run the numbers when I get to UK's turn again, see what after Germany moves, because I might be able to move a couple guys into Persia and just have these guys think twice before uh, just stacking the Caucasus. They probably won't be able to stack it yet. They're going to need a couple turns. Um, and I don't know if they're going to take the Russia attack. If they take the Russia attack, according to my calculator, I have a 97% to hold, but you never know when it comes to dice. So... Uh, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm hoping I didn't miss anything. All right. West Russia gets two fighters. Russia gets one Russian fighter. Okay. And our seven infantry go into Russia. All right. All right, we got a little bit of money to work with. We can buy uh, two more artilleries and four infantry. Um, we are probably gonna have to withdraw from West Russia, starting with the United Kingdom. Right, so every, every uh, withdrawal when it comes to Germany starts in the United Kingdom turn. Everything to do with uh, Japan starts with the Russia turn, right? So, so after we use these fighters, however we're going to use them, they're going to end up back in uh, in Russia. They have to end up back in Russia. But we should be able to drop a fleet and start squeezing uh, Germany. So that's going to be it for Russia round four. And I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number four. All right, United Kingdom round number four. So Germany finally started buying infantry. He bought nine infantry, an artillery, and a fighter. He took Karelia back, and he took Ukraine back and moved most of his stuff into Ukraine. And then he moved his, oh, he attacked C-Zone 17 with his lone destroyer and, and died, which is nice. And then he moved his uh, Africa troops forward towards uh, Egypt. So this turn is going to have a lot of moving parts. We did a lot of calculations on this. We had to, we had to calculate the, Russia's defense, India's defense, um, Egypt's defense, 
and then a couple of attacks. So Gibraltar, so Sea Zone 13 is exposed to Germany with fighters as long as they hold Gibraltar. USA has to take that. I decided I want to start making landings and start being a pain in the ass for uh, Germany on this side. So I went ahead and bought an aircraft carrier, another transport, and three, inf three infantries for India. And once USA takes Gibraltar, all of their navy can move up to Sea Zone 8, which will be able to defend against the seven uh, fighters. Because I'll have two UK fighters here and a bunch of ships, right? We are backing out of West Russia this turn, so our four United Kingdom fighters are going to have to go into Russia. That's because he has great odds to snipe Russia with his land units here and a bunch of fighters and, and a bomber unless I back him off. So I have to back him off. So this round, we're going to send some USA fighters to Egypt to block this. When we advance this, we're going to take Gibraltar and keep firing troops over in Africa. But I don't want to give him access to Africa. Uh, a couple things I debated I am going to do. I'm going to go ahead and strafe Burma. Um, obviously, if we can take it, that would be great. Uh, if we don't... As long as we kill the two guys, we'll still have 96% chance to hold against what he can attack with. But by killing these guys, it gives him a little bit less attack power, and we'll get an extra IPC, and also he can't stack it with planes. So, although it does look like he's, he's kind of thin here. I, I got to start repelling him, pushing out on here. I can kill these guys. It might be good for me. But we're going to start being an annoyance on the back end. So we're going to strafe that. Try to take it. Strafe is the wrong word. Strafe me implies I'm going to retreat no matter what. I'm not going to um, unless I lost my infantry. So um, we are going to attack France. So this guy is going to go to C zone 8. Pick up an artillery. Drop him in France. This guy here is going to take this infantry. Go to 8. Pick up a tank, drop them in France, and our two fighters are going to attack France, and our cruiser is going to bombard France. All right, what else? I think everything else is defensive, moving, shuffling stuff around. This stuff has to go all back into Egypt. And then we got to fortify India, fortify uh, our Navy here. So let's run the combat and see how it works out. combat worked out so our attack on Burma was completely successful thanks to the fighters hitting for once and then our uh, attack of France we were able to take France which is also good Those are going to sea zone eight. And our four fighters are going into Russia. I think that's it. I think that's everything. Yep, I think that's everything. All right, 
let me look at the map notes real quick here. We're gonna read about USA, USA, USA. Four fighters, UK. We're moving them over there in Russia. Okay. All right. All right. Aircraft carrier. Transport. And three infantry into India. And that is it. All right. That's going to be the end of United Kingdom round number four. And I will see you guys back for USA round number four. USA round number four. So Japan bought five infantry, an industrial complex, and two tanks. Two tanks went to Corellia. I'm sorry, two tanks went to Kwangtung. Five infantry went to Japan. And the industrial complex went to Manchuria. And then he took all the surrounding territories around Russia. Which I suspect that he would. So, we're going to have to press back on all this stuff here. And try to fight off Japan. Because Japan's got a lot of money now. Japan's working with 45 income. Which is pretty good. But we're not out of it yet. So with, with America... Uh, we went ahead and bought four infantry, four artillery, and a, and a fighter. All right, and then we're going to move everything forward here. Into uh, Algeria. And then we're going to take... Two guys... And the two fighters. And hit Gibraltar. With America. And I think that's it. Yep. That's everything we're going to do for attacking. So let's get that done. All right, and the reason reason we had to take Gibraltar was so that season 13 was safe from the fighters in Germany. So now that we did that, we take our our American fighters and go to Egypt. All of them. And then we take four transports back to season 11. And we take the other six infantry and drop them in Morocco. And then we move everything into C Zone 8. Come on. All right, so everything's going into C Zone 8. And the fighters are going down into Egypt. So we're fine there, we're fine there, we're fine there. So. We're going to move this guy back to America. Actually, we won't do that. Yeah, we'll move him back to America. All right. I think that's it. Put four artilleries, four infantry, and the fighter.
in Western United or Eastern United States. All right, for Russia, we bought. We're going to go ahead and buy five artillery. All right, for the combat move, we're going to do. Two infantry and three fighters are going to hit Karelia. We're going to use, let's see here, two infantry and two infantry and one infantry and all the surrounding territories. And then we're going to use one tank, one tank. On both of those and that's all we're gonna do as Russia one two three yep these transports should be safe because we took uh, Gibraltar so that's done Egypt, we already did that, right? Okay, I'm going to leave empty transports because I want to make sure that they go back to season 11. All right. All right, let's get this done. Alright, combat was okay. We uh, took Karelia and we took all the surrounding stuff. Everything is going back into Russia. Except for one infantry. is staying in West Russia. Everything else is going in there. And then our five artilleries are going into Russia. All right. So we're set up to hammer Kazakh, right? If he decides to go into the Caucasus, I don't know if we can win it. I'm not sure if we can win it. But we'll have to see. That's going to be it for USA 4 Rush Round 5, and I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom Round Number 5. All right, United Kingdom Round Number 5. So Germany finally decided that they're going to start buying infantry. So he bought a fighter and 10 infantry. And he's going to be, because right now he does not have... He took Karelia back, and then he moved uh, his stack, took the Caucasus, and he's holding the Caucasus. I didn't do the math on this because I don't think I can take it because he's gonna Japan's gonna move these guys over here or probably the five fighters over here but I'm not sure if he's gonna do that I think he has to do it in order to keep this um, so I got to run the math on that uh, but I'm not gonna worry about it uh, on this turn I'll worry about it on on uh, America's turn. So, I also ran the numbers on India. He's got a really good chance to take India. I can get it up to 81% to defend by putting three more infantry, or actually, it's only gonna be two infantry uh, because one infantry's gotta go here to Persia to block. 
so that these three tanks can't come down and kill it and kill India. Without those extra three tanks, he does not have odds. Um, this is great. I can move everything from Persia over here to Trans because these are going to be all wiped out by America. And I'm going to fly two British fighters down here to India so I can hold this. Um, the other thing is I can start landings now. He got another fighter, so this is this is still safe. I did the math on it. It's still safe. Um, but I need to start landings to try to I don't know, break up Germany's money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a tank and an infantry, go up to C Zone 3, and take Finland. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. We'll take uh, Norway. Then we'll take one infantry. Go up to Sea Zone 3. Take Finland. Then we'll take one infantry. And take Northwestern. Alright. We went ahead and bought for England uh, six more infantry, one artillery, a transport, and another plane. We're going to let the United States deal with that. And we're not going to strafe this again. At least not this turn. Probably not ever. And I'm pretty sure that's all the combat we want to do. And I just double check C-Zone 3 is not in range. As long as I take Finland and Norway, his fighters that are in Germany can't get there. He has no bomber. His only bomber is Japan's bomber that's in uh, Kuang Tung, and it does not have range of C-Zone 3 at the moment. Ideally, if he puts it in Ivanki, it can range everywhere. This is one of the best spots for bombers if you get a chance. Put bombers in Ivanki. They can range damn near the whole map. It's, it's unbelievable what kind of range they have. Uh, but it's not there yet, so we don't have to worry about that quite yet. So, um, that's going to be it for the combat. All right. For the non-combat phase, one of these fighters, if I can light them up. All right. One fighter is going down there to C-Zone 17. Two of those fighters are going down to India. One infantry is going to Persia. Everything in Egypt is going into Trans. Right? Everything in Egypt is going into Trans. So I want to move anything? I don't think anything. I think that's it. All right. So I think that's it. We'll see what Japan does. Japan gets greedy and tries to take Novo and doesn't move here to stack this or move down to uh, Persia. Uh, we might hit we might hit the Caucasus with everything we got in Russia. I don't know if we're going to be able to. I'll run the numbers on it. All right, that's going to be it. And if he keeps buying planes, so we'll throw a fighter in C Zone Eight, throw the transport in C Zone Eight. We'll throw one artillery and two infantry into India. 
and we'll throw four infantry into mainland United Kingdom and we'll start shucking them over there to Finland he's probably gonna move these planes in range of C zone 3 but if he does that we can move our aircraft carrier and our destroyer over to 14 and maybe hopefully bounce it over here to C zone 8 actually I kinda like the way this is working right now where I can just fly a fighter every turn over to 17 the fighter in 17 can go to Russia or it can go to India so every turn we'll have an extra United Kingdom fighter going to either one of these two places to defend which is a pretty good position to be in uh, that'll go away obviously if he puts uh, these eight fighters in range of 17 we'll have to move so all right that's gonna be it for United Kingdom round number five and I will see you guys back for United States round five all right United States round number five so Japan bought five tanks and five infantry three tanks for Manchuria two tanks for Kwangtung and then five infantry for mainland Japan he then moved a small stack down here and took Persia and he risked a tank and a bomber against an infantry here and but didn't I didn't get any hitbacks and then he took uh, he already had this so he moved his five fighters into the Caucasus I'm not exactly 100% sure why he did this Persia play um, I guess if he wants to hit India with 15 tanks um, he probably can do that but he's gonna lose some tanks and it's gonna be he's not gonna have enough I don't think maybe maybe he'll do that but I don't I don't think that's such a good idea if I was Germany I would definitely buy a bomber this turn because I'm gonna he can't let me have these transports with nothing guarding him so I just wouldn't do that we're gonna send two of our uh, American fighters uh, back to Russia this turn and so all we did with Russia is we bought uh, four infantry four artillery and a plane same purchase as last time and then for the combat move we're gonna move forward into uh, Libya take one of these fighters we're gonna kill Libya and that's all we're gonna do as far as the combat goes with America all right we did the math on this as well it, it could hold right now at 100% against the eight German fighters but if we throw another transport in there it's probably better for us I mean another destroyer so we're gonna try if we have the money with England to do that my plan also with England is to wipe out Persia and I've calculated I can get this up I can get India up to I can get Russia up to 97% to hold I can get India up to 80% to hold I can get and I think that's it those are my big concerns that I'm worried about right now so let's do the combat real quick Alright, combat went pretty well. Uh, we only lost uh, two infantry in the Libya attack. So we're going to take the, this fighter here. And we're going to land it. Where are we going to land it? I guess we can land it in Egypt. Well, no, let's land it in uh, Algeria. We'll move these guys up here as well. We're going to take these two fighters and take them up to Russia. Actually, I don't really want them to be in Algeria. I don't really want this fighter to be there. I'd like the fighter to be somewhere. I'll put it here. 
I'd like it to be in range of... Now let's put it there. From there, it should be able to get to India or Russia. Let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, so it can get to India or Russia from there. We're going to take one of these fighters and go down here. That guy can go into India next turn as well. We're going to take this fighter and go back up here to C-Zone 8. We're going to take four artillery and four infantry. Go to C-Zone 13 and drop them in Morocco. And then we're going to take our empty transports back over to C-Zone 11. Right? Right. All right. All right. All right. We're going to throw our four artillery, our four infantry, and our fighter in eastern United States. And that, that will be the end of America round five, and I'll, we'll move on to Russia round number six. All right, Russia round number six. So I already set up all the attacks here because it took me a long time to figure out what I was going to do to try to trade. Uh, went ahead and just bought two infantry and four, or, I'm sorry, two artilleries and four infantry. We calculated our defense here to withstand Germany. I need to have 17 infantry, 13 artilleries, two tanks, and seven fighters in there. Oh, I got two AA guns. I didn't even calculate. Um, but it gives us uh, over 90% to hold. I wanted to try to trade everything, but I can't. The problem is going to be these, these tanks are going to come in and these tanks are going to come in. So he's going to have, uh, pretty soon he's going to have a lot of firepower coming in. So we went ahead and did uh, a fighter, two infantry, and a tank on Karelia. We want to take that back so we can't produce any more German troops. I'm going to try to trade this one, but uh, God willing, we'll kill the artillery because I just don't want him to be able to hit it with the eight fighters and the artillery. Um to take it back. If he wants to hit what I have there, I want him to risk planes. And then went ahead and did uh, one infantry, one artillery, and a tank at Novo. One infantry, one artillery, and a plane at Kazakh. And then we're going to try to, hopefully these all go well. And that way we'll, if all everything succeeds, we'll have 20 IPC next turn. Um, if the least likely one fails, like at Bello, uh, we'll have 18 if the all other ones succeed. So we're hoping to get up. At least we can buy six more infantry next turn. But Rush is getting really thin right now. So let's run the combat and see how it goes. Let's see, what are my map notes? Yeah, yeah, USA Fighters. Okay. Uh... Nothing I need to worry about. Strong, favorable in Bell, yeah. Strong in Karelia. All right. Here we go. Alright, combat was alright. In all cases, the aircraft, none of the aircraft hit. It was all infantry or artillery that hit. That That's insane. Attacking, I've had such bad luck with attacking planes. 
All the fighters are going to go back to Russia. Uh, we did manage to kill the guy in Bello, so at least he can't... Uh, he can't take this back. I do have to move one infantry into um, West Russia so that the tanks can't just bounce up here. I expect to lose that next turn. Or this, this round, actually. But everything else succeeded. Now, if he wants to take this one guy and then use all of his fighters and risk some planes, I guess that's okay, but he also would have to do here because these guys are going to be dead. So it's going to be interesting what he decides to do, although he's got tanks here that can hit this with the fighters. So he might decide to do that too, but he's risking a bunch of stuff um, to do that. But we'll see what he's, what he's willing to do. So I just made sure I moved a guy there. Perfect. Um, this kind of sucks, but it is what it is. I have to, uh, I have to leave it for now. He'll probably just take the uh, Vologda, which is cheap, and two free money. But um, we need to get this up to 17 in order to keep it over 90% to defend. So I'm willing to do that, at least for one turn. So we throw the artillery and the infantry into Russia. And we ended up with 18 IPCs for next turn, so we can buy six more guys. And since we can only afford six guys, we don't have to repair Russia at this point either. So he may do the bombing run and bomb it again, but uh, who knows, he may use his bomber to attack. Um. Like I said earlier, if I was uh, Germany, I would buy a bomber to so that I can't just keep dropping troops off here for free. Because this turn I'll have eight more guys. At the end of turn six, I'm going to have 11 land units in Finland for United Kingdom, um, which is pretty good. If I can get him to move his fighters somewhere over here, which they probably won't, somewhere in Baltic or Bello, then I can move my aircraft carrier destroyer combo over to 14. But at this point, at this point I can't because uh, I'll lose to the eight fighters. All right, that's gonna wrap up uh, Russia round six and I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number six. All right, United Kingdom round number six. So Germany bought a bomber, nine infantry, and an artillery, which we expected uh, because to threaten, he can threaten C zone 13 and three now, so I have to guard both of those. And then he did something interesting. So he moved eight and eight down here into Persia, and then he used 15 tanks to attack Transjordan and lost a couple tanks in the process. Um, I think that was a mistake. I just got to figure out a way to punish him for making his armor all the way down here. I should be able to take and hold uh, the Caucasus and push into, into Germany a little bit. So I might be able, I, I really want to punish him. My problem here is, uh, and the other thing is it gives me an opportunity. I'm going to actually move this fleet now to 14 and marry it with half of this fleet to defend here and then we can I can either go back up to eight or I can use it in the med to either launch attacks on caucuses maybe take Italy take France I don't know but I can actually preserve these now because I can move enough fleet here to protect them from this since I have to protect this anyway so for uh, we're gonna lose India this turn no matter what nothing I can do about it actually I take that back if I sent all my fighters there and bought three more infantry for India, I could get it up to a 50-50 battle. 49%, I think. 49 and 49. 50-50. Problem with that is I'm still going to lose. I think my re end result in the calculator was one fighter left. And Japan's still going to have a lot of stuff. So I'm going to opt to save my fighters. We're going to abandon India. I'm going to hit Persia as hard as I possibly can. And then uh, all the fighters are going to go to 
Russia. Um, we were going to use this fighter in the attack, but we're not. He's going to go onto the carrier in season 14. So it kind of sucks to lose India. Uh, but we're going to have a decent stack in Finland at the end of this turn. I also bought an industrial complex for uh, Norway. And we're going to start, uh, we'll have 36 in income to work with, and we'll start buying two tanks and eight infantry and stacking the shit out of Scandinavia as much as we can. Especially if we can delay this armor getting back um, and maybe whittle it down a little bit. So, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if this was a mistake or not, but I will have to, uh, I'll have to see. Uh, thought about pushing forward into Burma, but I don't see a point of that. If whatever I kill here, he's just going to hit it with Japan, and then all this stuff walks into India anyway, and he has it. The better play, I think, is Persia. That's not a great play, but it's it's better. I didn't anticipate him using the tanks in France. I didn't think he would move out of the Caucasus, but he did. And I anticipate that these five fighters are either going to go to Trans or they're going to go to Persia. So hopefully we'll, there'll be nothing left there in Persia. All right, but that's pretty much all the combat we're going to do. So let's do it. So we're going to hit. I want to say it's like a... Uh, it's not a 50-50 battle. I think it's like a 60-40, I think, in my... In my uh, in my favor, I'm just not 100% sure. But we're going to do that and see what it does. All right, it is favorable. Let me look and see if there's anything else I can do. I can't do anything else, I don't think. All right. Man, I hate doing this about India, but we're going to do it anyway. So let's do it. Let's hope we get some hits. That's not enough. Alright, that wasn't great. That really was not great. We probably should have retreated when we had all seven of our fighters. Man, oh well. Slightly in my favor was apparently not favorable enough. Nope. We're not going there. We're moving there and there. We're going here. We're grabbing four, going back to three. Dropping them in Finland. We're grabbing these four. Going here. Dropping them in Finland. We're taking our aircraft carrier up to three, and we're taking two of our fighters up to three. We're taking our cruiser to 14, we're taking our destroyer to 14, our aircraft carrier to 14, and our fighter. Over to 14. Man, just attacking fighters, we just couldn't get enough hits. All right, uh, let's see, what else? I think that's it. All right. I think that's it. Yeah. 
All right, industrial complex in Norway, seven infantry in the United Kingdom. And that is it. Yeah, that was pretty bad, so. He's gonna have a lot of stuff here. Depends on what he does here. Maybe he'll attack Kazakh. Hmm. Or maybe he'll stack Coxes. I don't know. We'll see what he decides to do. Uh, that was pretty ugly. But that is going to be the end of United Kingdom round number six. And I will see you guys back for... United States round number six. All right, USA round number six. So Japan took India like we thought. He bought five more tanks, three more infantry. So he's just going to start loading on tanks, I think. I still don't know how I'm going to make him pay for this, but I think I should be with, able to be with Russia. I should be able to take some of the stuff back. And as long as we keep the flow of troops going north and south, um, we should be okay. I'm going to do a move. I'm going to consolidate my navy uh, in 14 this turn. And that's going to allow me to hit the Caucasus if I need to. Transjordan if I need to, which might be the play. Or even Italy or France. Because I'm also going to have units here. So I might stack France next turn and Italy it depends but I think I'll have an opportunity to do it so United States has no attacks um, we don't have anything uh, anything to attack Let me just double check my uh, notes here USA fighters USA Okay. Uh, we bought three transports, three artilleries, and three infantry to reload. Uh, let's see here. Combat move, yeah. All right, non-com. All right, one infantry is going in here so that he can't blitz into Africa. Six guys are going here. These guys are moving forward. We're going to put these guys in 13 and go over to 14 and drop them here. Our battleship, well, let me stay here. One, Trent, one destroyer is going to go up there just to protect from the bomber and then everything else is going into C zone. So these fighters here. Hang on a second here. I want this fighter for sure to go here. Ooh, it can go to Russia. Okay, that fighter. Okay, maybe we'll send that one to Russia. All right, so that fighter can go to C-Zone 14. This fighter can go to C-Zone 14. These two fighters, if I can click on them, can go to C-Zone 14. And then this fighter can go to Russia. And then these guys will move up to Canada. And our transports will move up to C Zone 10. Because they'll be going over here next turn. And I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. All right. Our three transports, three infantry, three artillery. 
are going to the east coast of the United States. All right, that does it for America, and I'll see you guys back for Russia, round number seven. All right, Russia, round number seven. So it's getting a little tricky to hold Russia, so I went ahead and mapped out all of the combat ahead of time. We, all we bought was six infantry. That's all we can afford to buy. We are going to take some territory back, hopefully, and be able to buy more next turn. Um, we took... Uh, the infantry in the tank from Karelia blitzed Bellow. We're going to hit that with West Russia and a couple more infantry. Or one infantry and one artillery, I think. Then we took an artillery, three guys, and a fighter to hit the Caucasus. And then we took two guys, two artilleries, and two fighters to hit Kazakh. And then we took uh, a tank and three guys to hit Vologda. I mean, obviously he's just going to keep mass producing tanks and they're going to start coming. And I assume that he's going to start buying more tanks for India. Um, Japan's money is at 47. It's way too much, but um, you know, it is what it is right now. So uh, we got to start making some headway here in Germany. I'm really hoping I can catch these these tanks. Not sure where they're going to go. But at least in a turn we should have enough guys in Karelia to push in. So we'll see. We may even wait one more turn on that. Probably not, but we might. All right, let's run the combat and see how it goes. Strong, 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 strong. All right. All right, combat was pretty good. We didn't lose that many guys. We're gonna retreat our fighters back into Russia. We're actually gonna move. And infantry into Novo. Let's see. I mean, if he wants to use his fighters against these with one infantry, that's okay. Uh, we're going to lose all these guys in the Kazakhs. He can keep moving and stacking. and probably going to send all these tanks. So he's going to get enough of stuff here. I just got to keep getting enough infantry so I can hit back. I'd really love to trap these tanks here somehow. I'm not sure if I can do it, though. But that's all we're going to do for the non-com. We're going to lose both of these because he's going to take them with one guy each, probably. But that's all right. Let's look at my... Uh... All right. All right, mobilization. We just put six infantry into Russia. All right, we're back up to 25 so we can buy eight more guys, which is good. And even if we have to repair our one, we can put eight more infantry in Russia, which is nice. Plus, we got these guys coming. We got seven more coming. We got eight more coming from USA. We can take these and drop them into the Caucasus or hit Ukraine, which might even be a better idea, depending on what he does with this stuff. Or take Italy or trans or any combination thereof. We might want to sail all the way over here and just take trans. 
I don't know. It depends on what he does with his fighters, obviously, as well. also. If the, if the, let's see, one, two, three. Okay, so, I, as long as I take trans back, I can get him to be safe from the fighters. So I might be able to lightly use my transports here, protect them from Germany anyway. I got to see, let's see, these fighters can go one, two, three, four, nope. The bomber can hit though, so I got to be careful with uh, their air power, but that is going to be for another turn. So it's going to conclude Russia round seven, and I will see you guys back for United Kingdom round number seven. All right, United Kingdom round number seven. So Germany bought 12 infantry and an artillery. They took the Caucasus, they took Bello, and they took Karelia. Then they took their 12, their 13 tanks that were in Transjordan and moved them back up to the Caucasus. Um, so this right here is a big target for me. I really want to take it out. Um, I did the math. If I hit Caucasus with everything in range that I can hit it with from Russia okay I have an 81% chance to wipe Caucasus if he doesn't and that's if he moves Japan's five tanks from here and their five fighters and their bomber if he puts all that shit in the Caucasus my Russian attack um, will only has 81% likelihood to to take it. But the beauty part of that is if I decide to strafe, every single hit I do kills a tank or a plane. So that's, um, we're going to hammer this. I originally thought of maybe doing a 1 2, moving uh, United States over to 16, bombarding, hitting it with fighters. But I, the problem is I don't have enough units. If I had eight transports here and I could drop 16 units, I might do it. Um, but I only have four, and so I'd be losing fighters, and I don't want to lose fighters. So because I have an 80% chance to kill it without using the U.S., I'm not going to do it. I'm probably going to use the U.S. to hit trans. Germany moved. Uh, he fortified Italy, and he fortified uh, Berlin. But he didn't buy any more bombers, so this is safe the way it is, the C-Zone 3 defense. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move all 10 of our guys. We're going to hit these four fighters and these two fighters. All right? And I think that's all the combat we're going to do. I really wish I could take some more territory because I'm only have 29. I'm gonna have to start landing in France again and Northwestern, but I'll start trading those probably next turn. Because at the end of this turn, I'll have seven more units here plus a tank. I bought uh, a tank, two artillery, six infantry. Uh, the tanks going in Norway. The two and the six are going in uh, England to stack in in uh, Finland. I'm gonna end up backing this fleet off to 13 which is going to give me options to either send these three guy these three transports loaded down to Africa or I can start the uh, more concentrated chuck and once I send these eight guys up to Finland move these guys up to C zone 10 and be ready to do the old back and forth so I'll have to figure that out depending on what Japan does um, but I think I mean this may be a turning point in the game if even if he stacks this according to the calculator I have an 81% chance 75% to conquer it. Um, I will lose a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But I have enough money to buy eight more uh, infantry, and I'll have seven fighters from the other powers. Should be enough to hang on. Um, and that will just weaken uh, his attack power tremendously. So, that's what we're going to do. So, let's get this done. Look at my map notes real quick. USA, I know that. Fighters back there. Okay, I know that. Got that. And then got that. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Man.
Man, I wish I could have saved those rolls for... Uh... The combat was fantastic. Um, as I was saying, 50% of my infantry here got a 1. 10 hits. That's pretty remarkable. We'll move the tank down. We'll move four fighters back to Russia, two fighters back out to C-Zone 3. We will take our transports down to 7. We'll take 7 infantry. And let's take the AA gun. And we'll move them up back up to C-Zone 3 and drop them all in Finland. And then this fleet here will back off to 13. Okay, I'm going to have to do it manually here. No. Okay, that aircraft carrier. That fighter. Cruiser. We'll go back to 13. Right? All right. If he wants to attack these 10 dudes with four guys and seven planes, I'm hoping to get more than, eh, I don't know if I'll get more than four hits. Maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll land some USA fighters there just to mess with them. I might land some, that might be, that might be good. I'll, I'll do the math on it and I'll land some USA fighters in there maybe. All right. That's going to do it for the non-com. Right? Right. And then we'll put the tank in Norway. And a six infantry and the two artillery into United Kingdom. One, two, three. Okay. They are safe. All right. All right. That's going to do it for England round number seven. We'll uh, double check and see if we can take trans. Um, with a bunch of stuff. We may move our Americans forward or we may just move them back into C-Zone uh, 8 and maybe we'll take France with these guys instead of going up here to uh, Finland. I think I'm going to send them up here to Finland. But I'll have to see what, what uh, Japan does and then we'll have to see if this is going to be our target here. So we'll see uh, what's all s stacked in there. In fact, this is his whole Air Force, Japanese Air Force. So if he puts it in there, I think I just got to do it. I can ki kill all of his planes. I don't know. We'll have to see. Anyway, that's it for UK round number seven. I'll see you guys back for Un United States round number seven. All right, United States round number seven. So Japan... Japan bought seven tanks and an artillery. And they put two ta three tanks in India two tanks in Kwangtung, two tanks and an artillery in Manchuria. That's all they spent their money on. And then they moved three of their tanks and all five of their fighters into the Caucasus to protect the German armor that's there, the 13 tanks and two artilleries that's there. Um, and then he, but he did move all of his tanks. He's got a couple in Kazakh. He surrounded the rest of my capital here with tanks. And he's got three tanks in Sinkang. So I guess the idea behind that is if I hit the Caucasus, then he'll have a counterattack with Russia with a lot of tanks and five infantry. The only problem for him is that I can have upwards over 10 fighters and probably a British tank after I kill the Jap Japanese tank in Archangel. The Russian turn is basically going to... The Battle in Caucasus is going to eliminate the entire German Panzer Corps and all of the Air Force except for one bomber that Japan has. Japan has no other planes on the board anywhere. 
So, combat for this is going to be kind of light. I'm going to use this one infantry here to take Transjordan back to open the canal here. And then, this is kind of stupid. I generally wouldn't do it. Um, but I'm going to use these three planes that are in Moscow and kill this tank that's in Novo. The reason for that is I can move this one infantry from Vologda. I have two of them there. I can move one down into Novo. And that blocks this tank. So another tank will be blocked from hitting Russia. This tank will be killed by the British. And so all he'll be able to hit me with in Russia, five tanks, five infantry, and a bomber. And once I repair this IC and put eight infantry there, and all my fighters, uh, I factored in, where is his eye? Even if I only have 10 fighters in there, um, he loses everything. 100% to defend. So, and I can have 13 fighters. Obviously, the worst case scenario is that the, tank's all, the tank kills all these fighters. I think I'm doing one round of combat if they don't hit, unless the tank misses, but um, I don't think I'm going to waste a lot of planes. And then these fighters here in 14 can reinforce Moscow. So that's going to be a pretty light combat move, but we're going to have to move this fleet into C-Zone 17. It's protected because he can only hit it with two, two fighters and a bomber, and I have a battleship, a cruiser, and three destroyers and two aircraft carriers. That'll be plenty to withstand uh, that attack. I was hoping to land here with the Brits, but I probably won't. I'll probably just keep shucking north in Finland. So let me get the combat out of the way for America. All right. Please give me a hit. All right. We got extraordinarily lucky. The tank missed. So we kept all three of our fighters from America, which is nice. So they'll go back to Moscow. And then all this stuff will go forward. And then these four artilleries and four infantry will go into Egypt. We'll move these two into Libya, our cruiser, our destroyers our battleship and our aircraft carriers will all go to C zone 17 and then our four fighters are going to Moscow all right I think that takes care of everything in the med let me just click on C zone 14 when you got so much spaghetti you got to look and make sure that uh, all the stuff is leaving here uh, let's see here I think they're all leaving let me double check on the non-com when, when that happens but here's the other thing we're gonna do we're gonna take these four uh, artillery and these four infantry go up to C zone 3 drop them in Finland and then we're going to move three infantry, three artillery, and these three transports up to C-Zone 10. We're going to, so we can have more troops to send over to Finland next turn. And then we just decided to go all in, commit to the Finland shock. And our purchase was eight infantry, a transport, and a fighter. So we'll reload so that next turn when these four transports return, they'll meet um, these eight infantry and we'll, and we'll send them over here to uh, to Finland. Which should be squeezing them from both sides. He's going to have to decide whether or not he wants to take trans back because with our transports here, we can go down to India and take it back. Buying tanks is not going to cut it with Japan. Especially since we do when we do what we're about to do. So, I think that's everything that I want to do. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let me double check. Okay, those are going into Russia. Libya, yep. Egypt. Yep. 
Algeria. They're out of there. C zone 14. Should be nothing in there. Zero, zero, zero. Yep. C zone 17 has all of our stuff. Yep. Okay, Canada, Finland. I always double check these because if I don't move transports, I absolutely piss myself off. Uh, okay. And C zone 11. All right. I think that's it. All right. For our mobilization, we'll move eight infantry, the transport, and the fighter will all go into eastern United States. All right. All right. That's going to be it for America's turn. And we'll move on to Russia's turn. All right, for Russia, all we did was repair one from the industrial complex and buy eight infantry. So we did the math on this. Um, according to the calculator, it's a 96% chance to win the fight, 94% to conquer the territory. Uh, I have mixed feelings whether or not I want to conquer it or not. I guess if I get a tremendous result and he has like a plane left, maybe I'll retreat, but I don't really want to. I kind of just want to take it and just put his entire... Because the thing with this battle here, it's going to kill his entire German armor and his entire air force with Japan. That's pretty crippling. And then with uh, 14 fighters in Moscow... Um, his five tanks and five infantry and one bomber, that ain't gonna fucking win that fight. So, I guess he was probably banking on the idea that I would not take this fight, maybe. Uh, the idea is sound from using the Japanese fighters, you know, in combo to try to defend, but he did it out of order. And he should have waited. He should have been a little bit more patient. I think he was freaking out trying to get his tanks back into Europe because of the Finland stuff here. But he's going to pay for it. And I guess the best way to uh, have somebody not do this is to make him pay. So hopefully the dice don't absolutely uh, screw us. But we're going to hit this fight. And the other thing we did, obviously, with America, we killed the tank in Novo. So we're going to use this one guy here. And we're going to take Novo back for us. And that's really only to keep this tank from being able to attack Moscow. Because we're going to use England to kill this tank. And this will be blocked. So... This tank will be out of the fight. He will still get five tanks and five infantry and a bomber, but that ain't gonna be enough to take. Uh, that ain't gonna be enough to take Moscow, according to the calculator. Once again, so let's do this here. We're gonna take all of this stuff. All right, everything. And let's just pray that uh, we get some good dice. So here we go. Alright, combat was actually really, really good. So we wiped everything and we have a substantial amount of units left over. And... Okay, I may... I may, instead of using the, the tank to Moscow... I may drive the tank down here to the Caucasus. And then land some of the fighters. Because I'll, I'll have extra fighters. I've got... I'll have 10 fighters in Moscow. I'll have to run the numbers. After Germany's turn. But uh, with... With 10 artilleries and 4 tanks... He can hit it with a lot of stuff. He can still hit it with a lot of stuff. 
But uh, I don't think that's going to go very well for him. Uh, and we really accomplished what we wanted to do by killing all of Germany's armor. So that's pretty sweet. And that was it. It's a short turn. A lot of talking by me, but a short turn. Let me see the notes here. USA fighters did that. Okay, okay, okay. Empty transports. Yep, okay. I don't need to worry about any of the notes. Eight infantry go into Russia. So we have eight infantry and 14 fighters in Russia. And we have enough money to buy six more, which is good. Uh, he can hit, well, he can hit it with a lot of stuff. I'll have to run the math on it, but I think all in all, that was a very, very successful turn. We had a great result in the Caucasus, killing that, uh, so once again, the calculator, I need to keep trusting the calculator. It said it was an overwhelming favorite for us to win, and it was. Um... Projected the profit of 83, and I think that's probably I got even more profit than that. So just double check the attack power right now. His okay, so I'm finally now I have the attack power lead. I did not have it, but I do have it now. And keep in mind that um, 50 something of, of his 181 are in uh, Japanese tanks down here. So uh, tanks are not the way to go for Japan. At least not early. Once you have a fat stack of infantry, you can supplement them with tanks and planes, but infantry's by far the way to go. Anyway, long-winded by me, end of the round by Russia. And so that will be the conclusion of Russia round eight. I'll see you guys back for United States, oh, I'm sorry, United Kingdom round number eight. All right, United Kingdom round number eight. So Germany bought 10 infantry and a fighter. So now he's got nine fighters and a bomber in Europe. He used one infantry to take West Russia, which was unguarded. And then he strafed Karelia with four infantry and all of his planes. And he lost three infantry and retreated. And I lost three infantry out of my stack. So I think now the best course of action for us is to dead zone Karelia and not... Uh, not try to stack it with my England and Americans. At least not yet. Um, I do have to see though, he doesn't have anything in range of Hawaii because I don't want him to be able to take Karelia and then take Hawaii and snipe me. So I have to be in a position to retake Karelia if Germany ever takes it. And I think I will be. Um, the other thing is, so our fleet is here. I, I kind of want to sneak our fleet over here to 35. And then fly our USA fighters over here and marry it up. And then we'll challenge this fleet here. Then we can even uh, take some of the money islands if, if we, uh, you know, maybe grab. Because we we'll have a stack of guys. We're going to move this stack here with USA this turn. So we'll have 20 units here. We can either push them into India. Or maybe we can go down here and start taking money islands and stuff. So... Uh, we need to consider that. The other thing is we need to start landing back here. And it's going to be a couple turns now because of all of his aircraft. So England, I went ahead and just bought seven infantry and a destroyer. The destroyer will go up in C-Zone 3. The seven infantry will go into England. And we'll just keep shuttling over uh, troops over here because we're going to have six more Americans plus eight more in reserve after that. So we're going to have a ton of troops here. The question is, is Japan going to be able to hold out until then? And I don't know. So our combat here is we're going to take two guys, because we have to kill it, and take this. And we're going to take one fighter from there, and these two fighters. And then we're going to take the remaining five guys, and the tank, and take the three fighters and take West Russia back. Um, I really wish I had the ability to land here, but I don't have, I can't protect the adjacent sea zones yet because I moved my uh, fleet down here. If I wanted to, I could get them back. I could 
go to 14 this turn, and then bounce it back around for next turn. Uh, but I think I'd rather have the flexibility of sending my fleet into the into the Indian Ocean here if I need to. So we're gonna wait on that. Um, I want to be patient, but I want to don't want to be too patient because Japan is coming. So, but Germany, since we killed all of its armor, I think we can overwhelm it with uh, infantry if we just keep stacking. So that's what we're gonna do. That's gonna be our combat. So combat was successful. We did lose a guy in uh, Archangel, but we did not lose anybody in West Russia, which is nice. So we'll move our tank up to uh, Finland. And then we'll take our transports down to C-Zone 7, grab our artillery, grab our infantry, go back up to C-Zone 3, drop it all in Finland. And let's see here. These planes here can go 1, 2, 3. They can't land. 1, yeah. No, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, they can't land. All right, so that's still safe. This is still safe. And this is still safe right now, I think. Uh, all righty. All righty. I'll probably put one Russian infantry in there just so he can't just walk in there. He's going to actually at least have to send some planes or something. And I might move a Russian anti-aircraft gun into West Russia. I don't know. But I might. Might be worth it to try to hit some of these planes. If he doesn't hit Karelia, I'm pushing into Ukraine. But I'm guarantee or uh, the Caucasus. But I guarantee you with all the stuff here, I did the math, he's going to take the Caucasus back. But then he's going to have to deal with my 20 Americans here. And he's going to have to take Trans back or else he's going to lose India this turn. So I can't imagine him losing India this turn. So anyway, that's going to do it for the non-com. Where are all my map notes? U.S. fighters, I got that, I got that, I got that, I got that. Okay. All right. All right, our destroyer goes into C-Zone 3 and our 7 infantry go into United Kingdom. And that's it. So we are up to 32 income for United Kingdom. And let's see here. This will be in a good way if uh, he decides to stack it. If he, I don't think he will. If he decides to move everything in there, I think I can have enough to one, two it and kill it. Which means he probably didn't kill this. So we'll have to see. But anyway, that's going to be it for United Kingdom Round 8. I'll see you guys back for United States Round Number 8. All right, United States Round Number 8. So this is going to be a lesson in being too aggressive. So right here in the Caucasus, I really should have retreated. I had 10 artillery and 4 tanks for Russia. And I left him in here. And I don't even think he lost that much material when he took them. Um... He lost eight infantry. But he still has uh, a ton of stuff left over. Um, and now I can get uh, Russia to hold against this stuff here. But it's going to be one turn. It's going to take everything I got. And I'm not in a position yet to land in Germany. So 
Uh, this is gonna be tight, I think. But this was a mistake by me. By uh, after I wiped him here, I should have retreated and left him a couple fighters. Was uh, greedy by me to wipe his entire air force. But that's a lesson I'm gonna have to come back from. So with America, I just went ahead. Well, let me just say what Japan bought. Japan just bought eight tanks. Uh, he's just going full full court press, all tanks, 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 tanks. So uh, that kind of sucks for us. But and then he moved a transport down here. I'm assuming he's going to go after Africa next turn. Maybe. I'm assuming he will. But we'll have to see. Yeah, I assume he'll take a tank and go down here and just start running up here in, in Africa. Oh, that was a big, big mistake by me. All right. Uh, for America, we went ahead and bought uh, six, art six infantry, two artillery, and an aircraft carrier. We're going to start landings here in two turns, so uh, we're going to need a carrier for when we decide to start landing here. But it's got to be sooner than later. Other than that, the only thing I'm going to do is we're going to take Trans Jordan. So I hate the fact that he's got uh, a tank here. Next turn, I'll. Well, let's see. This fighter here. One, two, three. I can send this fighter to Morocco. Um, then it can't get to. Uh, really doesn't do any good in Morocco. It's not, it doesn't really do any good in Morocco, so we're not going to do it. I may have to leave some units down here in Africa. So maybe I'll do that. So let me grab this. Grab these guys. Go back to 17. Drop them here. Then I can bombard. I can bombard. And I'll move, I'll move uh, 10 guys. Actually, we'll move the whole fucking thing. We'll just move everybody. Screw it. And we'll take that. I have been getting the hit back so bad lately. So of course he had uh, he had two hitbacks. Double he had snake eyes after I bombarded and killed them both. None of my land units even attacked. That's that's priceless. Alright. We are gonna take these three guys. Go up to three, drop them in Finland. We're gonna take our four transports back to C zone 10. We're gonna take this guy over to 10. We're gonna take these eight guys here, this guy here, our AA gun. We're gonna land our fighter in C zone 11. And that's it. We moved our transports back, right? Yep. All right. Aircraft carrier goes in C zone 11. Oops. And then two infantry and six artillery. Into. Into uh, America. All right. 
For Russia, we're just buying six guys. Yeah, I know. The reason we're only buying six guys and no artillery is because we have uh, 14 income, so we'll have 15 income, so we'll get five guys next turn. Uh, we are not going to attack anything. I really wish I could go this way, but I'm not going to. We're going to just move a guy back into Russia. And then... Oh man, he can just go there anyway. We'll move them both. Man, this sucks. That was bad. All right. That was bad. Uh, let me see if I can hold. He's got, oh, let's see, 13 tanks. And I'll have 17 guys in there. It depends on if I have enough anymore from England. It's still 99 to hold. If I can get one more English guy in there, it's 100% to hold right now. But then again, the problem is this force, which I thought was really big. I mean, it is uh, 19... 19 units, but it's not going to be that strong. We'll have to see how it plays out. But this stuff now is going to have to go, I'm going to have to go in here. But if he's smart, he'll just shift stack. He'll move the 16 infantry from Germany up here, the 12 from Italy over here, and then just buy 10 more. Unless he wants to leave, he may not want to leave Italy unguarded. So he may not want to leave Italy un unprotected. We'll have to see. All right, that's going to do it for America round eight and Russia round nine. And I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number nine. All right, United Kingdom round number nine. So Germany bought a fighter and artillery and seven infantry, all of which got mobilized to Germany. Uh, he did what we thought he might do. He took uh, Karelia with one unit and then he hit uh, West Russia with two infantry and all of his fighters. And I only got two hits. So he lost both infantry, so he didn't take the territory. Uh, and then he landed all eight fighters into the Caucasus. Then he moved uh, some of his troops up into Bello. And he's shifted a bunch of troops over here. So he's got like three mini stacks in the three victory cities here. Uh, Japan is going to take Hawaii this turn. He only needs one more victory city. So I have to take and hold Karelia this turn. Lucky for me, he doesn't have any air power. I did the math and eight tanks against... 13 infantry, or 12 infantry, 2 artillery, and a tank, and an AA gun, uh, should not be able to win. You never know if it's gonna, because you just don't know about the dice, but it's got a 90%, 96% chance to hold. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that, and then we're gonna actually take uh, Northwest Europe. We're gonna move... Um, some of this stuff into C Zone 8. And then we're going to continue uh, shucking over here. It's probably too little too late. I bought 8 infantry and 2 artilleries. Um, and then we're going to move this lone infantry into Russia to just hold. And he's just going to build too many tanks. I don't think this is going to be enough units now. Really to do anything. Uh, he's just got too much, too much shit here. But uh, we'll see. 
So let's get this turned on. We're going to take uh, all these guys, our artillery and our tank. And we're going to take Aurelia. And then we're going to take one transport. Pick up one infantry. And take Northwestern. Right? Right. Uh, that's it for the combat. All right, combat went as expected. This guy is going to go down into Russia. Our little mini fleet here is going to move into C Zone 8 to protect our transport. We're going to take one fighter and move it down to C Zone 8. This still only has to defend against the bomber, so it should be okay right now. And we're going to move our AA gun over here to Karelia. Uh, pretty short turn for United Kingdom, but that's really all we can do. We're going to hope to withstand uh, the Japanese assault here and then try to get, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. We've got to take our other three transports down to seven, pick up these guys, go back to three, and drop them in Finland. Good thing I didn't mess that up. That would have sucked. So we definitely want to get those six units over there. All right. Yeah, this was just such a bad mistake by my part. It's really coming back to haunt me now. Because I would have had enough stuff here in Russia to easily repel this and now um, I'm gonna be hanging on for dear life I don't know if I can get enough units in here in two turns to hold back from all the eight nine tanks that are, that are gonna come but I guess I can move these in here as sacrificial lambs and hope they hope they hang on well we'll see what Japan does uh, I think that's it yep I think that's it Check out the map notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to put our two artillery and our six infantry into United Kingdom and two infantry into uh, Norway. All right. We live to fight another turn. He's going to take Hawaii this turn, which sucks. So USA is going to have to buy... What, what, how many units can he have? He has only one transport. Now oh, he's got two transports. So I'm going to have to buy... Uh, a bunch of units for uh, Western United States this turn. And then hopefully Russia w can withstand uh, the attack. If not, then this game will be over as well. So that's going to do it for United Kingdom round number nine. I'll see you guys back for USA round nine. All right, United States round number nine. So Japan bought six tanks, two artillery, two infantry. Mobilized two artillery and two infantry to the Caucasus. Mobilized uh, three tanks to India. Two tanks to uh, Kuang Tung. Or a tank and an, and an artillery and then an artillery into Manchuria. He took Hawaii, which we thought he would do. He took Egypt, which I can't. I saw this move coming, and I didn't do anything about it. That was so stupid. I've made two gigantic blunders in this game. One was my failure to retreat in the Caucasus, and the other one was so stupid. I could have left like five guys in there, and he couldn't have been able to take it. That was fucking stupid. Um... 
And so, but I didn't do that. So now, and he, and I can get, so I did some math. I can get Russia up to about a, let's see, 90 something percent to defend. 96% to defend, but it's going to take some work. But I can get that done. And um, this is not good for me here because of these fighters. Not matter. Not that it would matter because I would have... I'm going to take this back this turn. I was going to use an American fighter to take uh, 34 out. But I think I'm going to use a UK fighter to take uh, the transport out because then I can replace it with this fighter over here and then buy one if I need to with the United Kingdom. So I did some math and I gotta prepare, I gotta defend now against this. So America just bought uh, three tanks, four infantry and a fighter. Everything's going into the Western United States. Um, I'm going to uh, hit France this turn. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, I'm just going to use one infantry and my seven fighters. See if I can take this light and not get a hit back. Haven't had much success with not getting hit backs lately, but I'm going to try to. Actually, you know what? Let's just do two. Because that way I can't, the tanks can't get back here. And then we will... Uh, we'll take, uh, oh, wait a minute here. All right. We're also, we're going to hit France. So we're going to take four of these, 10 of these, or four of those, go to 14, drop them in France. We're going to take our cruiser, go to 14, bombard France. We're going to take our battleship, go to 14. Bombard France. We're going to take... Let's just do four infantry. And we'll do the tank. And then we're going to take eight of these guys. Go to eight. Drop them in France. We're going to take three artillery, three infantry, go to eight, attack France. Let's see here. This thing here, I can't do anything with it yet. All right. These planes are, are out of position to hit uh, France back. I did do the math on his counter strike with 19 with 31 guys and artillery and his planes and I do lose but he loses roughly 20 infantry taking it back uh, and given the fact that that'll be good for us because we're gonna move whatever's remaining down into the, into uh, Karelia here and try to try to squeeze Germany so and he's gonna have to use his planes to attack this he's not gonna be able to use them to attack Karelia this turn so that's what we're gonna do. Oh, let's see, what else do I wanna do? I think that's it. All right. Uh, why is it only 24? Eighteen infantry. I don't know. Oh well. Let's do it. 27. Why does it... I missed some guys. Combat was okay. We lost. Uh, we did lose a guy. 
we lost some guys taking France and uh, and that was it actually I don't know why I must have messed up the combat here because I only have 11 and 7 and I should have well let's see it'll be 12 7 and 1 that's weird I calculated wrong. All right, he should still lose about 15 infantry, taking it back. All right, so these guys are going to move down here. Our infantry and our AA gun are going to come down here and drop into France. transports I should have dropped 22 guys that's weird all right I somehow I messed that up all right and then this will go put it here These destroyers are going to go back here to 14, and this aircraft carrier is going to go back over to 14. All right, uh, let's see here. This guy's going to go up here. These guys are going to go over here. This is a feint. It's not going to matter anyway because all my transports are going to be here. So they're going to go back to 10 when this stuff goes up here. So it's not going to matter. United States. All right. For Russia, we're just going to buy five infantry. And then we're going to use a guy and our three fighters to try to take Novo back. Or, uh, yeah, Novo. All right, combat was successful. So our planes return. Let's see what our defense is gonna be of Russia. Twenty-one and I'll have twenty. Okay, so it's going to be done in ninety-six. All right. So far, so good on that one. And we will land. Wait. Everything will go into Russia. All right. 
Russia has no money left, which really sucks, but it is what it is. I can only hold out probably for a couple more turns because he's just going to come start hammering tanks. More and more tanks. Hopefully he'll use some tanks here so I can hit him. But I don't know if he's... I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Because he can just keep buying more and more tanks. So... That's going to be it for Russia round 10. I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 10. All right, United Kingdom round number 10. So Germany bought nine infantry and two artilleries. Eight infantry and two artilleries went into Germany and one uh, went into Italy. He hit France. He took uh, 28 infantry and as many planes as he could muster, and he lost 18 infantry taking it back. Um, and he ignored Northwestern, which we figured he would. Uh, you know what? I don't mind that exchange. Although, this is going to look rough for me because I, um, I think Japan's going to take this with a bunch of tanks. And I'm not going to be able to stop it. And once that happens, I think Africa will be wide open. So I'm kind of not looking forward to that. Uh, let's see here. I'm really not looking forward to that. But So I already mapped out all these attacks here because it's kind of a lot of moving parts. I'm going to use one of these fighters to go down here and kill this transport just so he can't grab a tank and drop it into, let's say, Italian East Africa, and then start running it all around Africa. It's going to at least take him a couple of turns to take Africa, and he can't take Madagascar that way. So um, I'm going to replace that fighter with a fighter from C-Zone 3. Uh, and then all of my American stuff is going to move to 8 this turn, so I'm going to send another fighter up to C-Zone 3. I went ahead and bought 8 infantry and a fighter for England. I'm going to I'm going to send uh, 6 infantry and a plane over to Archangel to kill this tank. 1 infantry from uh, Russia and 3 planes to kill this tank. And then this battle according to the calculator it's 93%, 3 infantry and an artillery to try to kill these guys. Uh, and this is really just so that these 13 tanks can't go up here, even though I don't think he will. But I got to um I got a plan for it. He may send these back towards Germany, which is fine. Get them away from Russia. I calculated I should be able to hold Russia still like 98%. And I should be able to, whatever survives this battle here is going to slide into Russia next turn. And um, with a couple more fighters, I should be okay there. I think I'm going to use these fighters and Americans to take Bello this turn and keep trying to squeeze as much out of Germany as we can. This, obviously, the Hawaii place set me back because I had to uh, build stuff here in Western United States. But once I get the shuck up and running again, um, hopefully I'll, within a couple turns I can squeeze Germany, especially if they can only buy 11 guys a turn. So I gotta, But i got to keep pressuring them as much as possible. So, again, this is going to be kind of rough here. I wish I had an answer for it, but I don't. Not right now. All right, so let's run these combats and, uh, and see what we get out of them. Strong, 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 strong. Okay. Okay, combat was pretty good. We only lost two units, and they were both in West Russia. We didn't lose anything to the tanks, which was amazing. This battle here in Archangel, two full rounds, nobody hit, no units. That's amazing. So the fighters will go back to Russia. Uh, this fighter here is going to land in Egypt. All right, our tank is going to Russia. 
And then our six guys are going over to Karelia. Our two guys are going down. Uh, we are going to move these three transports here. We'll grab that. Grab those. Load those, go up to C zone three, drop them in Finland. Up to C zone three, drop them in Finland. One of our fighters is going up to C zone three. And I think that is gonna be it. Uh, we should have odds to hold this still. I'm just hoping the calculator's right and I'm not miscounting. I think we should be okay though. And then in round 11, I'll have 20 units of, of uh, I'll have 20 United Kingdom units in Karelia and I'll have a stack ready to go over there for uh, Actually, round 11, I'll have more units in Finland. So we should be good to go. We might even be able to hit, hit France again. So we're going to leave that uh, there. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, the fighter is going up to sea zone three, and the eight infantry are going into the United Kingdom. All right, and we're up to 35 still, which is pretty good. So that will conclude United Kingdom round number 10, and I will see you guys back for America round number 10. All right, United States round number 10. So Japan bought tanks again. Bought uh, seven tanks, an infantry, and an artillery, I think. Let's see here. Seven tanks, two artilleries, and two infantry. Uh, the seven tanks were distributed with uh, the Caucasus, India, and, and uh, Kwaintung. A couple of infantry and a couple of artillery in India. A couple of infantry in Manchuria. He then took Novo and he took Persia. So I've run the numbers on this. He's got a fat stack in Caucasus now. He can hit me with 29 tanks, six artilleries, uh, nine infantry. He can hit Russia with a fat stack. However, I can land three more fighters at a minimum back there before Japan goes. So with three additional fighters there, up to getting it up to 17 fighters, I still have a 97% chance to hold this once I buy the three infantry with Germ with uh, Russia. I actually thought about buying one or, one or more fighter with Russia and it'd get up to about 94%, but it's 97 if I buy infantry. So I'm going to buy all infantry. Needless to say, Russia's turn will be extraordinarily short. We're not attacking anything. But for the United States, it's about shuffling. And then he backed off of Hawaii, right? He uh, He left Hawaii. I'm going to try to take this out with my sub here. Um, this defense is fine. I'm going to do a similar defense and try to start uh, a circular motion to try to get. Obviously, if I lose Russia, I lose the game because I don't think, although I will be in position to hit France pretty hard next turn. So, but we'll see. So, the only two uh, attacks I'm going to do with, with America is I'm going to take one infantry and one artillery and five planes and hit Baltic I'm gonna hit uh, Persia with two infantry and artillery and two fighters the whole point behind this attack is to keep this open because I'm gonna send transports to 17 They'll be in position that they can either bounce, they can either take hit Italy, they can bounce over here and hit um, India because this is the only destroyer can go here unless he buys stuff, which he should buy stuff there. But 
Um, these guys are a turn away. They can only get as far as close as 36 or 37. Um, and the farther away they get from Hawaii, that's fine, because then I can have an opportunity to try to retake it. So I just got to get these guys in position to hit France or continue to shuffle them over here. This next this turn, which is going to be around 11, though, I'm going to move my India stuff, I mean my United Kingdom stuff, into probably into Baltic and my Americans and land. I may hit France or I may land everybody up in Finland, but I'll have transports and everything ready to uh, strike France if I have to. This is going to be tight, though, because Russia is going to fall in a couple of turns. I can only hold this for so long, but uh, right now it's a it's a 97% chance to hold and I lose 30 infantry, but I have all my fighters left and he loses everything. So if I can keep my 17 fighters, I can, I can withstand this assault. And then it's just a matter of, Japan just has so much fucking money right now though. Dear God, they're making 51 a turn, which is just ridiculous. Although the attack power is pretty similar. For America, we just bought uh, two artillery, four infantry, two tanks, and another fighter. And we're going to shuffle those around in the non-com. So, let's get the combat done and see what happens. Alright. Well, fuck. Ah, uh, well, that fucked me. Because uh, everything hit in Baltic, or in uh, Bello, and fucking nothing hit in Persia, which fucked me. Because now he can just use these tanks to close the fucking pass again. Fuck. I guess I should have sold out and put another artillery in there. That's unbelievable. Oh well, we'll still go here. He's going to at least have to move somebody over here to, to attack it then at least. We'll probably just use this. I don't know. It's not going to take him much. A couple tanks. That's fucking atrocious. All right. Um. Okay. So we're going to send six transports to C zone 10. We're going to send two transports to C zone 8, two are going to go to 17, the cruiser, one aircraft carrier, and one destroyer. We'll go to 17. These two destroyers, where are they? The other two will go up to C zone 8. This aircraft carrier is going to C-Zone 9 because this one's going to 8 with this fighter. And then this fighter's going to 9. The battleship is also going to C-Zone 8. Uh, this infantry is moving over. These six are going up. These two artilleries are going up and these three tanks are going over. These four infantry are going up to Canada. Oh my god, I just can't get I just can't get over how bad this is. Five units, I can't get two fucking hits. Oh my god. Alright. I think everything else is gonna be okay. Alright. Let me make sure this is going over here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's right. Six transports, 12 units. All right. All right, fighter will go into Western or Eastern US. The tanks, four infantry. will go in the western, two artillery will go in the eastern U.S.
All right. My God, that's so bad. All right, we're gonna buy three infantry with Russia. We're not gonna take any combat. Thought about doing this, but I don't want to risk the uh, the men. Let me see. What if I do? What if I do take three men out of there? Ninety-three. Twenty-seven. It goes down to ninety. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I really wanted to do it, but I'm not going to do it. So we're not going to do any combat. We're not going to move anybody in the non-com. We're just going to put three infantry into Russia. And at least we have enough money to buy five guys next turn. So, that's going to be it for USA 10, Russia 11. And I will see you guys back for United Kingdom round 11. All right, United Kingdom round number 11. So, Germany bought 11 infantry. He uh, took back Northwestern. He took West Russia and he retook Bello. Now, my thought on this is that he took West Russia because he's going to rush these 28 tanks right up into Karelia, take it, and then I won't be able to take it back before the end of the turn, and then he'll win the game because I don't have anything else in position. Ooh, I might need to make sure I kill this here. Let me take the sub and try to kill this. Um, so I have to take this back no matter what and I am going to go ahead and push forward into Baltic and stack because these guys will move over here I got Americans coming I got another uh, eight English coming um, my English transports are going to be uh, up here my American ones um, four of them are here but six of them are here so there's going to be a lot of transports going up to three I would really like to start killing his fighters if I can, but I just don't know if, I, if I'm going to have enough time. But this battle for here is, is imperative. And then all these guys got to go into Russia to, to hold to make this 97%. We just have to do it. So let's take four of these guys. We're going to take two of these fighters, or four of these fighters. We're going to take two of these fighters. And we're going to hit West Russia. We're going to stack uh, Baltic. And what else? I think that's it. All right, I think that's it. America's going to be in position to hit France. I think I can actually hit this and take it. But I think I want to go up here and then I'll have I'll have all this stuff ready to hit France and I can drop 20 units in there um, at a next turn. Or, at least, or I can drop 28 units next turn in France. So that might be what I might have to do. We are taking a risk. I calculated that uh, we're going to move our USA destroyer here this turn to protect, and we're going to move this stuff here. Uh, but it's got a 92% chance to hold against the 10, the 10 fighters and the bomber. Obviously, if we get another result like we got in uh, Persia, where it's a 2% result and he kills all my fleet, then the game is over. But um, I, I have to keep getting troops onto the mainland because this is just going to be a pain in the ass. So I think that's it for the combat, so let's run it. Uh, 
I don't know why that's unlikely. I get a surprise strike on that, so... It should at least be... I don't. I guess there's nothing between uh, strong and... I mean, unfavorable? I don't know. Alright. Alright, let's run it. Alright, for the non-com, the fighters are going there, our fighter from Egypt is going back there, and all of our guys are going there. Uh, these guys will move forward. Uh, let's see here. This fighter is going to go up here to C-Zone 3. Our transports will go here, pick up the eight guys, go back to 3. Drop them in Finland. Right? Right. All right. What am I missing? I'm not missing anything. I send the fighter up there? Nope, I didn't send the fighter up there. Oh, see, it took a destroyer. I don't want to take the destroyer, I want to take the fighter. Okay, that's what I wanted to do, move the fighter, not the destroyer. That actually wouldn't have mattered, although I do need the destroyer down here. I'm just wondering if I should move one destroyer down here. If I had five destroyers... Ninety-seven. Four destroyers, ninety-two. Alright, we're gonna leave it at four. Alright. That's gonna be it. Hopefully I did the math right. What's in Russia? Uh, let's see here. So 30 guys in Russia. Where's my Russia defense? All right. All right. The fighter goes into C-Zone 8. And then everything else... Hmm. put one infantry there. All right. All right, that's it. All right. Strength to hold at this point, according to the calculator, is 97.8%. 97.8. So, we'll see if that holds true. That'll be it for United Kingdom round number 11. And I will see you guys back for America round 11. Alright, United States round number 11. So, Japan actually went for the Russia attack. He bought, uh, I, I want to say like five more tanks, eight tanks and an infantry. He put uh, three. He put four tanks in the Caucasus, three in India, one in uh, Kwangtung, and the infantry went into Kwangtung also. 
He hit Russia. He lost uh, all of his stuff. But he killed all of my infantry. I lost 30 infantry and actually two fighters, which is not good. Um, but he left us some opportunities. So... Uh, we're gonna go all right so we just we're gonna keep the flow going I'm gonna try to hit this as much as possible so that he won't have another strike we can buy five infantry with Russia and that's what we'll put in there hopefully Germany does not uh, use all the ten fighters and hit this uh, but they they might I guess um, well, we should be able to put 20 units in France in round 12 so what we're going to do is now that uh, he put the destroyer here to block India, but that's okay. I'd rather take the Caucasus anyway, keep him from building here. He'll take it right back probably, but it's just going to take him more effort and I should be able to build up some. So we're going to take our four guys, go to 16. Oh, he's going to wipe that whole thing if I do that. He's going to wipe all that out if I do that. So I'm not going to do that. I don't want to sacrifice the four transports. Especially since I can use them to hit Italy when I have to. So let's not do that. Because he can use the fighters on C-Zone 16. It's not safe. That kind of sucks. Oh, man. I would really like to uh, really like to hit this. I don't want to sacrifice a transport. I mean, if I take it, I am going to lose that fleet, which really sucks. Is it worth it? Because he's got the three tanks to take it back. I don't want to do that, I don't think. I could move here and take Persia. And then he'll squeeze me out this way. No, I think I'm going to save that fleet. I think I'm just going to save that fleet. We could kill that destroyer, though. But then we'll be trapped if he takes this back. So I don't want to do that either. Hmm. That's pretty good with that in Germany there. I'll have enough defense here. Okay. That's not what I wanted to do. I did want to hit this. But it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to hit it. So. We'll drop this down here. And we'll hit it with the five fighters. Man, I really wish I could hit this. Is it worth sacrificing one transport to kill all these tanks? I don't know. Probably not. I can drop my England guys down here in the West Russia. I should be able to drop them down and, uh, and stack maybe. That, that is rough. Plus, I'll have United States. I'll have three United States tanks over here this turn, so. Oh, man. I would love to, love, love, love to hit this. But I don't want to lose my fleet. All right. We're not going to do it. We're just going to take uh, Bellow back. And then we'll, we'll shuffle around. We'll hope for... Uh, we'll hope for... Although I am going to move all this stuff here. Four guys and a tank. And he can do, what, seven tanks and two artilleries? Nine tanks and two artilleries? It's probably not a good idea. I won't do that either. All right. Let's just hit that. Hopefully we can one round it. Oh, and he left. Alright, 
For the non-com, we're going to fly our fighters back to Russia. We're going to move our destroyer down to C-Zone 8. Move our aircraft carrier to C-Zone 8 in this plane. We're going to move this plane to C-Zone 8. We're going to take all of this stuff here. Go to C-Zone 3, drop it all in Finland. We're going to move these up here, our two tanks, our four infantry. Over there, we're going to move these four infantry up. We are going to move these four transports over to C-Zone 10. It's not even safe for me to move this fleet backwards. So that'll be it. We'll leave it there. It, it at least is still able to threaten uh, Italy for at least a turn. I could have hit this and this. I only have two transports. I could have taken this, taken this. Uh, I, I like it in position to hit Italy, so. One, two, three. Yeah, so we're going to keep it there for right now. All right. That's it for USA. We'll put our six artillery in United States and two infantry. And then we'll put four infantry into Western U.S. All right. All right. For Russia, all we're going to do is buy five guys. We can't do any combat because we don't have anything to attack with. Our non-com, we don't have anything to attack with, so we'll throw our five guys in Russia. And that's going to be it. So what do we have there? We have... Uh, 15 fighters against six tanks and an artillery. Ah, uh, we should win that. It should be a couple more turns before he can... Uh... Plus, we should be able to move um... this England stuff down here. We should be able to keep Russia for a while. In fact, we might be able to move all this stuff down here. These three tanks can get down here. I don't know. That was a pretty big battle for him to lose. I think he's probably just getting tired of waiting. But it wasn't going to get any better for him. Uh, I, actually, I think maybe if he was a little bit more patient, it might have. Because he was going to keep adding tanks. Now he can still buy... Well, I don't know. If he does not... If, if this does not attack West Russia, I'll hit this with seven fighters and our four infantry. And kill these off. Um, if he doesn't do that. I'm thinking he's probably going to want to use some of them up here. But he can try it. I don't know what he's going to do. So that's going to be it for... Wait, let's look at the attack power. 139 to 208. Wow, and that one battle gave me a 70-point lead on it. Wow. That's pretty amazing. I think I can probably throw a couple transports here now. Next turn and take Hawaii back. So we'll see if that happens. Anyway, I'm talking too much. That's going to be it for America, round 11, and Russia, round 12. I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom, round number 12. All right, United Kingdom, round number 12. So Germany went ahead and bought nine infantry and two artilleries. One infantry went to Italy. Eight infantry and two artilleries went to Germany. 
He did attack West Russia with a lot of his planes and his two artilleries, and he took it. Lost an artillery. Then he attacked uh, Baltic with 10 guys and an artillery and some fighters, and he wiped it out. Uh, but he lost four guys. Didn't touch uh, Bello. And kind of shifted around, so he's got like six guys in France, seven in Italy. Kind of moving him around. So, uh, for United Kingdom, because he moved his fighters into the Caucasus, um, these are safe now. This, this uh, C-Zone 8 and C-Zone uh, 3, I think, are safe at the moment from his potential attack here. So, all I did was buy a tank, an artillery, and eight infantry with United Kingdom. We're just going to keep the flow going. And then for this, all we're going to do is we're going to take all this stuff here... And these seven fighters. And clear out West Russia. And we're going to get ready to hit these, but, but not yet. Uh, what can that do? Nothing. All right. Let's get that done. Alright, so combat was successful, although we did lose a guy on the hit back, of course. We'll take our seven fighters and go back to Russia. We will take our eight infantry and move them up into Karelia. We'll take the one guy here, and then we'll grab our four transports and pick up all this stuff. Go back to C-Zone 3 and drop them all in Finland. Um, we're not going to move another fighter because I think uh, 15 fighters and 5 infantry is probably enough to handle uh, 6 tanks and a artillery, if that's where he decides to go. So, and I think with America, I'm going to take uh, Ukraine with one guy and take it light and then move, uh, I don't know. I don't know, I'll have to see. So we're going to move all this stuff in there. We may move our 3 tanks into West Russia. I'm not sure, but we should be okay to do that. I think that's all we want to do. All right, so we throw a tank and an artillery into Norway, and then we throw eight infantry into United Kingdom. Pretty short turn for United Kingdom. We're still not making a lot of money. Only 31, but I guess it's... Uh, I guess it's better than uh, what the alternative is. Sooner or later, Africa, uh, Japan's going to start landing in Africa, which is going to suck. So I got to hopefully knock out Germany by then. I think I'm a couple turns away from really being able to hammer Germany. But I'll have, in the next two turns, I'll have a significant number of units up in here. So that's going to do it for UK number 12, and I'll see you guys back for America round 12. All right, United States round number 12. So Japan bought eight more tanks and an artillery, which he mobilized to the Caucasus and India and Kwangtung. He used his six tanks that he had in Caucasus to hit West Russia, and he lost five of them. But he killed all my United Kingdom stuff there. Uh, he took the rest of Australia, and he took New Zealand, and then he moved uh, guys over to India, and he took Trans, so he's probably going to go in here. So, I'm not a big fan of that, but uh, for America, we just bought uh, four infantry, six artillery, and that was it. And we banked seven IPCs, because once we send these guys over here, we're going to have six transports full in C-Zone 10, and we need four units for the next turn. We're going to drop a couple of uh, in, uh, artilleries here, and then um, probably next turn, we'll throw a couple of transports here, and then we can take... Uh, Maybe a bomber, one, two, three, yeah, maybe a, a trans, couple of transports and a bomber and uh, try to take this back. All right, so for the combat, though, we're going to take one infantry and take Ukraine. We're going to take these three 
artilleries and and four fighters and hit that tank and then we're gonna take two guys and one of our fighters and hit trans and I think that's it we're not gonna hit France yet but we're gonna hit it soon Let me look at the notes real quick USA fighters yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're taking a chance because I'm gonna only have 14 fighters here but I should have uh, I don't know I should have enough stuff to defend we'll have to see and I'm sliding these uh, English guys down here and I'll have the three American tanks there I may even be able to sprinkle some fighters there I don't know we'll have to see let's get it done That was silly. I should have bombarded him. All right. For the non-com, this fighter will go to C-Zone 17. These four fighters will go back to Russia. These three tanks will go into West Russia. These seven guys and these two artilleries will go into Karelia. Uh, two artillery, two tanks and four infantry we'll go up to sea zone three drop in Finland and then these six transports will go back to ten these four infantry will move over these two will move up these six will move up and then these four infantry will move up to Canada We're going to lose both of these, but that's okay. That's okay. So we're going to have more stuff here. He's going to lose. Well, he probably won't lose anything uh, going that way. But the more we can put in here to hit this, well, the better. So that's fine. All right. All right, we're going to put four infantry there and two artillery and then two artillery here or four artillery there. All right. All right, four Russia, we're going to buy four infantry. We're going to take one guy and two fighters and one guy and a fighter. Try to push out on that. And that's going to be it for that. All right. We were partially successful. We took uh, Novo and we did not take Kazakh, though. But... That's all right. Uh, we killed the tank, which is fine. So he'll only have six tanks, and we killed that other infantry, which is fine. So that's fine, and then we put four infantry into Russia, and that will be the end of Russia's turn, and we're up to 15 IPCs to buy five more infantry next turn. Before Japan goes, we're going to slide this stuff down here, so we should be okay. So that'll do it for 
USA round 12 and Russia round 13. I'll see you guys back for UK round 13. All right, United Kingdom round number 13. So Germany uh, just bought 11 infantry. Uh, 10 into Germany and 1 into Italy. He then took back uh, the Ukraine and Velo, which we thought he would take them both back. And that's all he did. Uh, this C zone is still safe. And this C zone is still safe. So we didn't have to buy another fighter. But we, we still can't hit Germany with a 1-2. That's good enough. So with uh, we decided to buy a transport and 8 infantry. We're going to throw the transport up here. So that we're going to have, or maybe we'll throw it in C-Zone 8. It's just a little bit better defended. Um, so that we can, at some point, hit start hitting this with a lot more units. So the only thing we're going to do here is we're going to take 2 infantry and 7 fighters. And we're going to hit uh, Bellow. And let's go down there. Let's do that. What else are we going to do? Nothing over there? No, nothing over there. All right. Oh, I can't do anything either. Okay. Okay. That worked out pretty good. We suffered no losses. Six fighters are going back to Russia. One fighter is going into West Russia. All this stuff is going down into West Russia here. Oh, that's not even there. Okay. My bad. I thought we had an extra artillery. We don't. Okay. I didn't realize that this was in there. So we'll take that and slide it over there. With the tank. We'll move our artillery forward. We'll take our four transports, go to C zone seven, pick up our eight guys, go back up to three, drop them in Finland. throw a transport into C zone 3 and 8 infantry into England and we're hemorrhaging money we're all down to 29 so we're down to 29 money for England that's going to do it for England round 13 I'll see you guys back for United States round number 13 all right United States round number 13 so this time Japan bought five infantry Six tanks, five infantry, and an artillery. You put the five infantry, Manchuria and Kwangtung, three tanks in India, three tanks in Caucasus with an artillery, and and then he moved his transport over here. He's going to go take probably take Madagascar next turn. So I'm going to have to send a fighter down here to kill that transport just so I can be done with Africa. I'll lose Madagascar, but that'll be it. Um, I also, so for America, I bought uh, six infantry, six artilleries, and then I banked 10 IPCs. We're going to drop uh, more another fleet down. Next turn may be the turn to hit France. I'm not quite sure yet. It might be the turn to hit France. I don't know. Maybe, but maybe not. So we are going to hit Ukraine with three of those and four of these. And that's it. That's all we're going to attack with. Hmm. I might want to send a fighter down there. Let's see. I can get a fighter into West Russia from there. I may want to send a fighter because he's going to hit Africa. He's going to hit that with Africa. Three tanks against two guys in a tank. I may want to send maybe a fighter or two down there. Because I'm going to have three tanks and five more guys there. 
or four more because I'm going to hit this both of these again all right well, we did the math we should still be safe so let's do that All right, that's pretty freaking good. No hits. All right, for the non-con, these four fighters are going back to Russia. Our three tanks are actually going to move to Russia. Our seven guys will come down to West Russia with our two artilleries. And two tanks. Our Two artil our artilleries and our four infantry will move to Karelia. We got six artilleries and six infantry that are moving into Finland. Our four transports will go back here to 10. We'll move four of those up there, four of those over there. Four of those up there. Our fighter. We'll go down here, South Africa. We're gonna lose Madagascar for sure, but at least we'll kill the transport. That should slow down that advance. All right. Six artillery going into West uh, United States with two infantry. Four infantry go over to uh, the other side of the United States. All right. So now we've got 53 monies. We're going to buy five, five units with Russia. And then we're going to try one one two planes and a plane Combat was a miserable failure. We took nothing. Uh, we killed his infantry, but we lost our infantry. So uh, that sucked. That was kind of worthless. All right. Our fighters fly back. And our five infantry go into Moscow. And that, my friends, is the end of Russia round 14. And I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 14. All right, United Kingdom round number 14. So I messed up. Germany bought 11 infantry. But because Japan took this back and I didn't take it back, he used his fighters. He had a landing spot for his fighters, so he was able to kill this fleet. So that really sucked. And then, unbelievably, he got uh, no hitbacks. So he killed three artilleries with three infantry and three uh, artilleries with no planes, and he got no hitbacks. So... That kind of sucked for me. We are going to do... Uh, we're going to go to two infantry here. Uh, yeah. Two infantry. Yeah, we'll do two infantry and two fighters. One fighter from there, one fighter from here. 
Then we'll do six infantry from there and all five of these fighters. Try to clear Ukraine again. And then we're moving everything down. All we bought with the United Kingdom was four infantry and four uh, artilleries. His planes are out of range. I thought about stacking France, but 35 infantry, that's not going to work. So I think we just keep shucking it, killing whatever he sends. I should be in a position to one-two this with um, America and United Kingdom if he does not move his Japanese guys in here and take this back. Which he probably will. I mean, that's what I would do, but he probably will. So let's run the combat and see what happens. You gotta be kidding me, dude. Come on with this. Alright, combat was good. We're gonna lose these five guys to Japan, but that was good anyway. Uh, let's take these five fighters and go back here. Uh, let's see here. If I go down to 12, uh, let's see, go down to 12 fighters in Moscow. What's my defense from 4 and 11 tanks? Still 100%. How many guys do I lose? I lose six infantry still. All right. All right, so we'll send two of these fighters here. And then we'll move five of these guys down here to West Russia. An artillery, a tank. So my West Russia defense is at 96%. I got what? 12, 3, 1, and 2 fighters. 96%. And I lose, I lose 10 infantry. But he loses all of his tanks. Uh, that's a good trade. I'll take that trade. And then we move... Uh, this, let's see. This forward. These 8 guys forward. We're going to move, uh, let's see here, take our four transports down here, grab these eight guys, go back to C-Zone 3, drop them all in Finland. I think that's it. All right, if he doesn't wipe this out with Japan, then we're going to steal a couple more territories probably. 35 infantry in there is a lot, so that may be... It's going to be a tough nut to crack. But, like I said, I'm hoping if if he... I'm hoping that I can do the 1-2 with America and England to kill, uh, to take back the Caucasus once and for all. So, we'll see if that happens. All right. Four and four. Alright, we're back up to 31. And that will do it for United Kingdom round 14. I'll see you guys back for America round number 14. Alright, United States round number 14. So, Japan bought six tanks, a fighter, and two infantry. Three infantry. He put uh, an infantry in Manchuria, two infantry in the Caucasus, and then the tanks everywhere else. And then he um, he did the three tanks against my two infantry in a tank in Egypt, won it. I should have left my fighter there because he did this where he took Madagascar, but he moved this fleet here. I didn't even see it. Moved it down here, so now I can't kill the transport. So he's going to take Africa. And probably fucking Brazil, too. God dang it. What a nightmare. All right, I did the math, though. I can hold Russia and West Russia. Um, I'd love to press into Germany, but I really can't right now. I just went ahead and bought uh, four more infantry, four more artillery, another fighter, and a bomber. And we're just going to keep shucking and sending uh, fighters over here and infantry. So, let me see right now my Russia defense... My Russia defense, because my I'm gonna buy um, I'm gonna buy three artillery, I think, with Russia instead of four infantry. 
Uh, I might just buy four infantry. Oh, uh, let's see here. Why do I have the 12 there? Okay. That's with 13 tanks, and I lose what? 10 infantry? And he loses everything? But he's gonna have a lot more. He's gonna have a lot more stuff. So. Let me look at my. I already mapped this out two turns ahead of time. All right, I think I'll be good anyway, because I'm gonna dr I'm gonna drop all this stuff in here, and I'll have another fighter, so I should be good there. So I'm gonna take two infantry and four fighters. And attack Archangel. Man, I want to kill this bad, but I don't have any uh, infantry. I'm going to take one infantry and one artillery and just pray that we get a hit. Take that. And then I'm going to blitz this. To get that back, that'll get me 8, 10, 11, 12. And I can maybe get up to 14 if I take this back with Russia. With I'll hit it with uh, one guy and three fighters. All right. I think that's it though. God, that sucks. I'm gonna lose Africa. I could actually hit this guy with this plane. Oh, that's an idea. No, I'm not going to do it. It just really sucks because I'm going to lose Africa now. Oh, man. That's rough. I did calculate if I do this right in like two turns, I should be able to hit this with uh, UK and America, even after he stacks it with more tanks and stuff. Of course, unless he uses the German fighters, which at that point, maybe I'll just make a beeline for Germany. I don't know. All right. Uh, let's get this done. That's amazing. All right, combat was mixed. I mean, I guess it was okay. I lost a guy taking Archangel. Uh, but I didn't lose anybody taking uh, Baltic. All right, so now we're going to move these down here. And we'll move two guys. Over there, we'll take a fighter and move it there. We'll move the six guys and the six artilleries there. We'll grab four and four. Go up to C-Zone 3, drop them in Finland. We'll move the six transports back to C-Zone 10. We'll move two infantry there, four there, six artilleries. We'll move four infantry up there.
13. I don't know if I have to move these guys here. Lose 10 infantry. What if I don't move the guys? What? That's the wrong defense. All right. Let's go down to 10. Okay, still 100%. And what does he got left? Uh, okay. That's with three artillery. So these guys don't have to leave. Okay. Fighters, the fighters will definitely go back. But the um, the infantry will not. I do kind of. You know what? Let me put one. Because once I move all these guys down here, and that should be enough to hold. It should be enough to hold. All right. I don't know if it's going to be or not, but we're going to find out. It's not going to matter anyway soon enough. Oh, you know what? I want to do something with this fighter. Oh, what do I want to put this fighter? I'll send it up there. Man, I hate to fucking lose Africa, but I'm gonna. All right. All right, here we go. Uh, two, inf uh, let's see, four infantry. There. Four artillery in eastern United States. A fighter and a bomber in eastern United States also. All right, that's going to do it for America. All right. For Russia, we're going to buy three artilleries. And we're going to go, let's see. We're gonna go one and three fighters. And just hope we kill that tank, really. I will say this, he has had horrifying luck with tanks and dice. And that took two rounds of combat, and the tank got no hits. That's, of course, my I only got one hit with three fighters in two rounds of combat. So that's both kind of silly. Uh, but that's the way it is. So that's going to be it for the Russian move here. And we'll throw the three artilleries into Russia. And that will do it for... America round 14, Russia round 15. And I will see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 15. All right, United Kingdom round number 15. So Germany bought a fighter, two artilleries, and five infantry. Everything got mobilized into Germany. He then uh, took Baltic back pushed six infantry into Poland and pushed one infantry into Bulgaria. 
And now he's got six fighters and a bomber in Germany and four fighters in the Caucasus. I've run the numbers on this and I'll give you the guys the breakdown of my defenses for Japan for both West Russia and uh, Main Russia after this, uh, after this turn is over. So, because we're going to do a couple things, a little bit of shuffling around. I'm not sure it's the greatest, but we're going to try some stuff here. Uh, so for England, we bought an artillery, seven infantry, and a tank. And realistically, Japan should be winning this game. This guy should be winning this game. He keeps buying tanks with Japan. Realistically, he has so much money. He's got uh, 60 IPC, and he's making 57 every turn, which is soon going to be like 60-something. He should just be buying... 10 infantry and 3 fighters every turn and just stacking them landing he should have transports going and just and just start flooding in 3 turns he could have 30 infantry and 6 fighters and just roll them towards Russia and I, I'd be overwhelmed and he could keep doing it every turn he could do it um, he could keep sending infantry which would overwhelm me um, he's not doing that he just keeps buying tanks I guess looking for the quick knockout which is, I don't know if he's if he's just uh, he knows he's going to win the game and he's just uh, playing around, or if he's just thinking that the tank buys will will work out. He's going to take Africa. I uh, can't do anything about that. He's definitely going to take Africa. Probably sail over here to Brazil. So I'll probably uh, maybe I'll take one of these transports and go down here with America and drop guys in Brazil just so he can't. Uh, can't take it I don't know that's gonna be a pain in my ass but I might have to do it so for uh, England we're gonna take two guys and two fighters and hit Bulgaria we're gonna take uh, two infantry hit Northwestern we're gonna bombard Northwestern we're gonna take this fighter and attack Northwestern and we're gonna take this fighter and attack Northwestern man I would love to kill this tank but I'm not gonna I can't yet I would love to kill these guys in Poland too but I'm not gonna But once these guys move forward, once he stacks this with like 10 guys in range of West Russia, then he can use all of his fighters and his bomber and hit West Russia, and that'll be bad for me. So uh, I'm likely going to use my Americans. I don't know. I have to run some math, but I'm, I may. No, I probably won't use my Americans. I might, because I'm going to send some fighter, another fighter over here. One, two, three, four, yeah. So, all right. One, two, three, yeah. Okay. So that's all going to be all the combat that we're going to do this turn. And then we'll shuffle some guys around. Okay, combat was great. We didn't lose anybody. Our fighters will go back to West Russia. Uh, let's see. One fighter will go back to C-Zone 3 and one will go to C-Zone 8. We're going to move these three guys back into West Russia. This guy's going to come down into Ukraine. And these eight guys... And this artillery are going to come down into West Russia. Our eight guys are going to come down into Karelia. 
And then... Oh, what do I need? Three? Three transports will come over here. Oh, no, I need four of them. Four transports will come pick up these. Go back up to three and drop them in Finland. And I want to move two infantry into Russia. At some point, if if uh, Germany gets infantry uh, adjacent to West Russia, I'll drop my AA gun down into uh, West Russia. But until then, I'm going to leave it in, in uh, Karelia right now. All right. All right. So far, just calculating what Japan has in range. Uh, these are my defenses for Russia and West Russia. Both of them are 100% uh, to defend. Uh, the idea is that maybe in, in two turns, I'm, calc I'm figuring he'll have 20 tanks in here by the end of this turn. And he'll have 29 at the end of next turn. And I think that's when I can hit it with uh, England and United or uh, United States and England. And I should be able to wipe it unless he moves all of his 10 fighters from Germany there. But what I'm hoping to do is put enough pressure on here that he's going to have to leave some fighters back here. Because we got to start we got to start uh, really pressuring Germany. Really, really pressuring Germany. So, uh, we'll probably lose Ukraine and uh, and Bulgaria. That's fine, though. We just took the money for this turn. It's going to spread them a little bit more thin. Germany still has a lot of money. He can still buy, uh, well, he can buy nine guys. So, we're slowly but surely squeezing him. Um, I don't know if it's going to be enough, but uh, that's going to do it for United Kingdom round number 15 and I'll see you guys back for United States round number 15 all right United States round number 15 so Japan they did alter their purchases a little bit he bought a submarine and a destroyer seven infantry three tanks and an artillery I think two artilleries and three tanks the three tanks went down to India and then he put infantry in the Caucasus and artillery, infantry and artillery in, in uh, Kuang Tung, and three infantry in Manchuria. Um, at least he's changing from all tanks to mixing in infantry, which is probably smart. So I've been stacking... I ran the numbers on my defense. So at the start of this turn right now, both of these territories have 100% chance to defend or it's like a high 90s so <clears throat> um, we're okay right there he is going to push forward and take all this stuff back with Germany unfortunately and then the other problem we have is that he went and took uh, South Africa which is not that big of, I mean it is a big deal because he's going to take all of Africa the bigger deal is that he can bounce over here to uh, 22 and take Brazil, throw an IC there because he's got so much friggin' money, and then start just pumping out ships and stuff. And he may start doing that with South Africa. Uh, that He has so much money, I might consider that too. I guess I can counter that with the United States fleet, but if I do that, it's going to take away from, from shucking the troops up here. We are going to put up a, a defense here in Brazil. It's going to be a light defense. I got to take some risks because I got to keep the pressure up on Germany. So we just went ahead and bought uh, six infantry and artillery, two subs and a bomber. And with the two subs and a, the additional bomber, um, once if if this fleet here moves into 22, um, or 23. 
then uh, I can I can have a 75% chance to take it out. If he moves into 23, I can use ships from here, so it's even higher percentage. If he moves into 22, it's like a 74, 75% chance to uh, wipe this with my newly minted stuff. Um, the other thing we are going to do is I've planned to hit this in two turns. Um, the issue I have with that is if he decides to land the rest of the German fighters in the Caucasus, uh, that becomes like a 40-60 battle. And it also... It's, it's just not going to be that effective. Um, however, if he doesn't do that, I'm probably next turn, starting with America, going to strafe this at least um, to try to pressure it and crush it if I can. If I can't, then, I don't know, this game may go past the season ending. So, our attack is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take two infantry and two artillery. And this fighter, and one of these. And we're going to try to get rid of Baltic. And that is going to be it for our attacks. I was going to use this United States guy to push forward, but I think I'm going to use a Russian and I'm going to drop my United States guy into uh, Russia to be able to participate in the attack here or trade. Hopefully with England we can we can uh, knock Kazakh out and trade that. And that'll disrupt the supply line a little bit. At least for one turn. At least then he can't get 18 tanks or 21 tanks in there. Unless he buys them. So... Let's see how the combat goes. Okay, combat was kind of rough uh, in in Baltic, but we did manage to take it. Uh, one fighter is going to go there, one fighter is going to go to Karelia. Our four infantry and our artillery are going into West Russia. And these four and these four are going into Karelia. This USA guy will drop down into Russia. Now for the fun stuff. Our bomber is going to England. We're going to send a fighter to Brazil, another fighter to Brazil. We're going to sack one transport. And put two infantry into Brazil. And then we're going to take five artillery and the four guys go up to sea zone three, drop everything in Finland. These four transports are going to go back here. These four infantry are going to go here. Our four artillery are going to go up there. And then we'll move these four infantry, cycle them up there to Canada. Where else here? All right, I think that's it. Yep, I think that's all I want to do. All right. That's going to be it for the non-com move for America. All right, our two subs go into C-Zone 11. Our bomber goes into Eastern United States. We are going to put an artillery into uh, 
Oh, we messed up. Oh, we messed up. I wanted to send these two artillery up there. Up to Canada. Shit. Alright, we're gonna put one there. Alright, let's see here now. Because we messed up, we might put all six infantry in here. So these five are gonna come back. Four and four will be gone. So I have one artillery, so then we'll have. We have one more artillery there, so that'll be two artillery and eight guys. So we'll send, we'll put four guys in there and two guys in the United States, in the Western United States. That sucks. That was a mistake by me. Too many moving parts. All right. For Russia, we're just going to buy five infantry. And we're going to move forward and take uh, Ivanki. That's it. All right. For the non-com, we're going to move a guy into Novo and a guy into uh, Vologda. So what am I at? My defense will be at 15, right? So my defense, let's see here. Because I have seven there, right? Seven. Oh yeah. Because they're going to be, the two, of, the two of them are going to be gone. Which is going to leave me only, if those two are gone, it'll leave me 14. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 14. Okay. And it's 99.8. All right. And then we're going to throw our five infantry into Russia. And we are back up to 15 again, so we can at least buy five more infantry next turn for Russia. We're getting sizable stacks. But uh, we'll have to see at next turn what he's got in here. If we can do, starting with America, do a one, maybe a two, maybe a three, a one, two, three, and knock this out. Depends how many uh, German fighters go here. But I, I anticipate he's going to take all this stuff back. But it's going to thin him out. So the more pressure we put on Germany, he can only buy nine infantry. Couple of artilleries and eight and seven infantry if he does that, but only nine uh, land units. So we keep whittling them down, and that's all we can do. We'll have to worry about this fleet here, but um, it is what it is. And then with with the United Kingdom, I'll probably attack this just to see. If I can kill it. It's probably not great, but I'll probably attack it. But we'll have to see when that when that uh, comes around. So anyway, that's going to be it for USA 15, Russia 16, and I'll see you guys back for UK round number 16. All right, United Kingdom round number 16. So Germany just bought three infantry and two fighters, which went into Germany. He retook Baltic, Bello, uh, Ukraine, Bulgaria, and uh, Northwest Europe. So he's back up to 35 IPCs. So now he's back up to 11, unit, 11 infantry minimum next turn. Um, and then he shuffled around his fighters. So he's got six fighters in Kazakh and six fighters in... Germany to protect. So he is going to try to use his German air power to defend this here, which is going to cause me probably not be able to do the one, two, but all I'm going to do is keep whittling it away. Um, this right here, I was thinking about maybe hitting it with England, but I think I'm going to wait a turn. It's going to bounce over here 
and then I can send it down here with England, kill it, and then move my entire fleet here. Because unless I kill France and both of these in the same turn, these six fighters can hit C zone 14 also. If I take France and Algeria, then C zones 14 is safe from the Caucasus, but uh, that's going to be a struggle. I may just throw a couple of units here from America and just start pushing this way. Which I may have to do. Uh, so we'll see we'll see how that goes. All right, for England, I did buy another transport. I bought a transport and eight infantry. And the reason I did that is because I want to get up to seven transports. Usually I don't do this for England. But the idea is that I'm going to want at some point to be able to hit Germany with a lot of United Kingdom units. And in order for me to do that, it's going to take whatever I can stack in Baltic and um, whatever I can land in Germany at the same time, right? So um, with seven transports, I can be, I can, I'll be able to hit it with 14 land units. But at some point, I have to figure out how to stack Baltic. Baltic, I'm going to take with America uh, this turn. Provided uh, I'm able to. So, in order for this combat, we're going to take two guys and one of these fighters and hit Ukraine. We're going to take two guys from here. We're going to take this fighter and we're going to take this fighter. And we're going to hit Bello. And then we're going to take these two guys and these five fighters. And we're going to hit uh, Kazakh. All right. Obviously, the plan is to limit the amount of tanks by two that he can put back in here. And it's killing Japanese infantry, which is a good thing for us. All right. So that is, oh, wait a minute. And we're going to take Northwestern. So let me grab an artillery and an infantry. Drop them in Northwestern. Bombard Northwestern. Attack with this fighter. And attack with, oh, I can't attack with that fighter because I'm using the fighter over there. Nope, let's not do that. Let's use this fighter over here. And we'll just do tuna fighter, tuna fighter. And hope that works out. It, it is a pretty high percentage anyway on both of those attacks. I did, uh, I think I erased it, but I did run it just to make sure. Um, I haven't been getting good dice lately, but uh, it is what it is. So hopefully, hopefully we wipe this in one round in Kazakh here and he doesn't get two hitbacks. But like I said, I've been having really bad luck with especially the hitting back dice. So let's run this and see what happens. Oh, wait a minute. No, we're going to do this. I don't want... Uh, it's going to be uh, unlikely or poor or whatever, but if I can somehow manage to squeeze a hit out of this, uh, that would be fantastic. So we're going to try it. All right, strong, 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 strong. Unplausible. <laughs> All right. I have been horrifying at Bombardier lately. Okay, combat was kind of hilarious. Um, it was interesting. I lost one guy in Northwestern, no guys in Ukraine or Bello. But then I one-rounded him, and he got snake eyes uh, on the hitbacks, and then he got these the one from the surprise striking sub on defense, which is fantastic. One round, unbelievable. Um, and hilarious at the same time. 
Our two fighters from England are going to go back to West Russia. We're going to send one fighter each to C Zone 8 and C Zone 3. Our six infantry will move down into West Russia. Our two infantry, our four artilleries, and our tank from uh, Finland or Norway will move over to Karelia. Uh, let's see here. Okay. What else do we got here? Uh, I think that's it. That's f hilarious. All right. I think that's it. Okay. All right. We throw our additional transport into C Zone 3 and our eight guys into England. Oh, I didn't move the six guys. Wait a minute. Okay. All right. Let's do it differently because I screwed up. Let's throw our transport in C Zone 8. We'll put two infantry in Norway and we'll put six infantry in England. Uh, it's not a complete tragedy because we're going to get 12 units. We can get 12 units. Uh, we have six transports. So we can actually get them all into Finland uh, next turn. So it's not horrifying. It's not great, but it's not, uh, it's not horrifying. But it's a mistake. God, that was stupid. That was stupid. I'm making too many mistakes this game. All right, that's going to be it for uh, United Kingdom. Hang on, let me just run the math here on the defense of West Russia. So I already have it written here. All right, so we killed those two uh, infantry, so there's only two left, but, but the 18 tanks can still hit it. Nope, they can't. So he's only got... Oh, that's Russia. Hold on. Still goes down to five. And then here... Uh, I have now 29, right? 29 infantry. And that's it. And nine artillery? Okay. All right. All right, we're still looking good as far as... Uh, wait a minute. Let me look at... Uh, Okay, I already factored in. So I, I already factored in the shitty result here so that these tanks can still hit Russia. I factored that in. So uh, they still can. All right, that's now is really going to be the end of UK number 16. I'll see you guys back for USA around number 16. All right, United States around number 16. So quick state of the board. Japan... Japan should have won this game a long time ago, if I'm being honest. He bought eight more tanks, two artilleries, and two infantry, I think? One infantry. Eight tanks, two artilleries, and an infantry. Uh, he should just be buying infantry and planes. Seriously. Planes and infantry, and he would have and he would destroy me. He's gonna take all of Africa, but since I pushed into Germany a little bit, I'm still making 24 bucks until Germany goes, and then I'll be making 20. Or 19. Um, but he's just, he's wants to knock me out with tanks. Uh, the other, the other issue that's going on is that it's uh, the 5th of February right now and the season ends um, the 12th or the 15th, I think. So if this game doesn't resolve by then, I think I could just keep... If he keeps buying tanks, I could just keep it extending it forever. So I did the math right now on Russia and West Russia. And I can get... Um,
the defense of them are going to be in the 90s. At the end of my turn, the defense is going to be in the 90s for both of them. But it's not going to last long because he can keep buying the tanks and stuff. So um, I need to really, I need to press for Germany. But my problem is that he's got 12 um, German fighters. The other thing I thought of was doing a one-two punch uh, from West Russia, my Americans. See, when it's um, when you're hitting Japan, you can do America and then United Kingdom, right? My problem is that, okay, let's say I hit this with America and retreat, retreat with my fighters. I don't have enough power to hit Germany right now with the United Kingdom. So all he has to do is send his six fighters and have 12 planes here. And my English guys will not kill it. So without the, with only the six planes, um, uh, I factored it in. With only the six fighters there, I can take it, 76%, unless he reinforces with the other six fighters from Germany, which I'm sure he will. So that's a no-go. The other thing, because last turn I screwed up and I didn't uh, move these 12 guys, I'm going to do something that's um, risky. I don't recommend it. Um, but like I said, the season's going to end. And what fun would this game be if we didn't take any risks? So on United Kingdom's turn, I'm going to push into C-Zone 5. I'm going to take all 12 of my guys and drop them directly into Karelia. And I'm going to do my best to defend C-Zone 5. And then I can start shucking directly from UK into Karelia without having to take the, sec the, the uh, extra step of going to Finland. So... Hopefully I can get, um, but in order for me to do that and to keep C-Zone 3 safe, <laughs> I'm going to do something I never recommend you doing, uh, which is buy a Navy with, uh, with Russia. And I don't mean a whole Navy. Um, but anyway, I did the math and in order for me to keep C-Zone 5, I'm going to need to do it. But then again, that's going to all start on United Kingdom's turn. At this pace, we're getting only one country done per 24 hours. So I don't know if this game's going to end before the uh, end of the season. So we are going to, for the American combat. Oh, the other thing that Japan did is he backed his fleet off over here. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, killed my transport, which is fine. He's going to lose the destroyer for it. Um, and then he's not threatening Brazil anymore. I'm going to lose these three IPCs. Maybe he sends this fleet in here. I don't know. I think this guy could have won the game a lot. He could be... He has so much money. He could be dropping tra another Navy with transports and hitting the United States. He's just all in on... He's focused in on Russia, I guess. Or he's just playing with me. And that may be the case, too. I don't know... Uh, uh, Tennessee General. I'm guessing it's Tennessee General. It's TN General. Uh, so I don't know I don't know that person so I don't know what they're doing but all right let's do our move here so we're gonna take our two subs and our two fighters and kill this destroyer we are gonna take two infantry we're gonna take a bomber a fighter this fighter and this fighter, we're going to hit Baltic. We are going to take one infantry and four fighters and hit Kazakh. Our plan is just hopefully to kill this guy. Taking the territory would be great, but if we just kill this guy, that's it's fine. And what else? I think that's it for... America's attack. What about, oh, let's use this bomber over here too. Why not? Can I get back to England? One, no, I can't get back to England, so let's not do that. Because I need this guy over in England. All right. I think that's going to do it. Right? All right. All right, let's run the combat and see how it goes. All right.
All right. Combat was okay. This guy's absolutely killing me with snake eyes. Both of his guys got hits again. I just don't get it. Uh, but it is what it is. So our four fighters here are going to go back to Russia. We are going to send one additional fighter to Russia. One into West Russia and one into Karelia. Actually, you know what? Let's send, oops, let's send one into Russia and we'll send two into West Russia. Oh, I won't because I can't get there. All right. The other one goes into Korea. I thought there might be a reason why we did that. The bomber will go back to the United Kingdom. Uh, these four artilleries and these two infantry will go down into West Russia. These four infantry and these five artilleries will go into Karelia. All right, our fighters will go into C Zone 8. We'll take four artilleries and four infantries, go up to C Zone 3 and put them in Finland. We'll take five transports and go back to C Zone 10. We will move our four guys from Canada, our four guys up, and our artillery. We'll take our bomber and go to England. We'll move two artilleries and two infantry up there to Canada. We can get rid of this map note now. That is so amazing. But at least he can't uh, attack this. So England can still take it. But that is stupid. All right. Actually, it probably works out better for me because England needs the money. Uh, let's see here. Although he's going to move more guys there. But that's okay. I'll just kill more guys. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think that's it. Did I move my transports? Yes. Move my transports? Yes. Okay. I think that's it. All right. All right. So we're going to put a fighter, two artilleries in western United States with two infantry. We'll put four infantry in eastern United States with two art with uh, and then they'll have six and two and then these guys will come back here and take pick up six and two. So we'll be okay with that. All right. All righty. Russia's is going to buy five infantry this turn. And we're going to do something we don't usually do, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to take two infantry and three fighters and hit um, Ivanki. And that's all we're going to do with Russia. Alright, combat was shockingly good. Um, we didn't lose anybody. Which is nice. So we'll fly our three planes back to Russia. We'll take one infantry and move it into Novo. Right? I think that's it. 
One infantry to Novo. Yep. All right. All right. Five infantry go into Russia. And we're up to 17. So here's here's what we're going to do, uh, depending on what Germany does. So Russia's defense now is what? Russia's defense is 6-6 six, six and 22 against... What do I have now? I have 17 infantry, 17, three artillery, three tanks, and 13 fighters. All right, Russia's defense is a 95%, actually 94, uh, really close to 95. 94.9% .9 to defend against Japan. And West Russia's defense. Man, that's even better than I thought. It's at, what, 31? Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be less because I'm gonna move I'm gonna move six guys out of there. And it's gonna be at 96.8%. So we're good right there. Um, like I said, we're going to start taking a little bit more risks, I think, to try to get this game uh, in the books before the season ends. That's going to do it for USA 16, Russia 17. And I will see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 17. All right, United Kingdom round number 17. So Germany bought another fighter and some artillery and infantry. So he bought, you know, round 17, he bought a fighter and artillery and seven infantry. Everything went into Germany. And then he took back Ukraine, Baltic, Northwestern, Bulgaria, Romania. Took all this back, he lost one infantry out of all those attacks. So I am not getting good return fire on on those battles but like I talked about last turn I'm gonna press the issue a little bit it's probably not the greatest idea but uh, I think he's gonna start getting wise up and start buying infantry or amazing uh, he's gonna get enough tanks where he can take Russia so I have to press the issue a little bit so we are gonna take C zone 5 but since he bought the additional fighter I'm gonna have to move an additional American fighter over to uh, to Baltic. I'm sorry, to C-Zone 5. Uh, so we're going to need four American fighters. We'll have two two English fighters, but we're going to need uh, um, we're going to need four American fighters. All right. So all we did for United Kingdom was buy nine infantry. Once we dominate C-Zone 5, we're going to just start trading Northwestern and Baltic every single turn, and hopefully Ukraine. I'm going to have, at the end of this turn, 10 infantry from United Kingdom in Karelia, and then next turn, I'll have another 11 infantry in Karelia, minus whatever we use to trade these again. So, we're going to take these two infantry, go to C-Zone 5. Drop them in Baltic. We're going to take our cruiser, go to C-Zone 5, bombard. We're going to take our fighter and attack. And we're going to take our other fighter and attack. Right, and then we are going to take uh, four infantry. and seven fighters. And hope we take that. I wish I could hit Poland, but I just don't have enough stuff in Bello to hit Poland. But I, re I really wish I could hit Poland, but I can't.
And I actually forgot I had an English tank here. I'll run it down here. I did not factor it into the defense of, uh, of West Russia. I should have calculated it. All right. Well, maybe we should just try to do... Uh, maybe we should try to take... Northwestern with England. Hmm. No, we're not gonna. We're gonna put all 10 guys into Cor Corellia. All right, let's run the combat. It's gonna be kind of short. All right. Dude, every single time every single time all right combat was all right he did get a hit back of course in uh baltic but he only got one out of the four in ukraine so these two fighters are going to see zone five two of these fighters are going back to west russia and then the other five are going back to russia Four infantry are going into Russia. And then these two infantry, these four artilleries, and this tank will go down into West Russia. Which I did not calculate, so let me calculate that. Maybe I should put it in Russia. Because that's already at 99, so maybe I should just put that one in Russia. That's at 99 also. Still losing 25 infantry. I'll put it in West Russia. All right. Oh, okay. We're going to take Actually, you know what? No. I need six fighters. Okay. Let me go back here with this here. All right, let me put one there. Let me put one there. And this fighter has one more. Hmm. All right. All right, I'm going to figure this out. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, the aircraft carrier is going here. Right? Okay, one, two, three. Okay.
Okay. Okay. All right. Screw that up. Oh, man. I'm not worried about that because that's going to be in here. Okay. now because I went one two three so now this this plane is done so how can I get this back I've got how many aircraft carriers I've got two aircraft carriers there I'm gonna use all four fighters from America I was gonna use four fighters from America Because I have to. Because I fucked that up. God dang it. I screwed that up. I can't get a fighter over there. So I gotta take a, an American carrier and go up there with a fighter. And then an American carrier over there with two fighters. If I do that, I need four. I'm just gonna have to worry about this. I might have to do something with the American transports this turn and not do anything. All right, that was a mistake. All right, let's land the carrier in there. All right, we'll take these two transports up here, grab two guys, or four guys, take these Three transports go down here, grab these six guys, and then we'll take all the transports, go into C Zone 5, drop everybody into Karelia. 
We'll take two of the fighters. Well, we'll take five of the fighters. No. Two of the fighters to West Russia, five of the fighters to... Um, what you call it? Back to Russia. All right, man, I screwed the pooch on that one again. I need an, I need a fighter up here, but I'm gonna need six fighters from America. Actually, I need four fighters from America to get up to six. I'll have to move this out of season three. I'll have to pause the shuck for one turn. Okay, so season two will be safe. I don't know, we'll have to see. God, what a bonehead I am. That's why I did the whole thing with buying a destroyer with Russia. You know what, I'm not gonna do it now. Maybe I'll send some to Africa. No, I still need to do it unless I buy, unless I move this destroyer with only one aircraft carrier with no planes on it. All right, let me run the numbers here. If I can get rid of two Russian fighters. All right, you know what we'll do? Okay, I know what we'll do. We'll add the tank. Okay, so this is Russia with 11 fighters in it instead of 13. Okay. So we'll take our aircraft carrier and we'll go here. And then two of the fighters will go there. Two of the fighters will go to West Russia. Three of the fighters will go back to Russia. So we'll have 11. We'll move that. We move the. We'll move this tank over to Russia. To get that up to 98, and that is exactly what we thought it was going to be. And now this here. Okay. All right. I'll just need to move this aircraft carrier. Okay. Put a note here. One carrier, one fighter. One AC, one fighter, two C zone three. All right. Then I'll have to take one of the fighters out of Oh man, I 
really screwed that up. But I should be able to send one of the United Kingdom ones back after I move again. Or just buy another one. Actually, you know what? I'll send it there. Okay. Actually. Okay, so this fighter can go up there. So we're going to be fine here. All right. All right, so this fighter in America can go up to Sea Zone 3. One, two, three, four. So then we'll just send a carrier there. We've got four fighters. Let me just double check that we've got four. And I don't need to move the other two fighters. I can move them into Russia if I have to. So let me look at... All right. Sea zone five. Four fighters. Okay. All right. Okay, that was a lot of work. I'm going to have to edit the shit out of this. All right. All right. Eight infantry to Russia, one infantry to Norway. All right, because I screwed up the logistics on the uh, United Kingdom because I decided to use planes and I couldn't make it back to Sea Zone 3. Now I'm going to have to move a carrier up here. But I can still add two USA fighters and I'll shuffle the fighters around. Um, actually, I can leave them where they're at. So I, I don't even need to move them out of here. So this one can go um, into Russia. So we'll be okay, I think. All right, I gotta stop making mistakes. That's gonna do it for United Kingdom around number 17 and I'll see you guys back for USA around 17. Oh, before I forget, the math on these and when all is said and done, Russia has a 98.6% chance to hold and West Russia has a 99.8 chance to hold against uh, everything Japan can hit it with right now. So we're pretty good right there. We're going to try to press the issue with Germany, but it's going to be uh, kind of tight. So again, I'll see you guys back for USA around number 17. All right, United States around number 17. So Japan, he varied his buy a little bit, but he still bought a bunch of tanks. Bought a fighter, seven infantry, and five tanks. And he put the tanks in India and Kaz and uh, um, Kwangtung. And then infantry in Ka the Caucasus and Manchuria. Um, this is getting to the point where he's getting um, odds to take Russia. So I have to do, if I don't do something, it's just going to be a matter of time. I don't think I can just wait him out because Japan has now 62 bucks every, every turn. It's just fucking ridiculous. Uh, but it's my own fault. I didn't defend Africa. And so now I'm screwed. Um, we're going to pressure the shit out of Germany. So we're going to actually move out of West Russia with our Americans. We'll slide our English into Russia to defend Russia. We'll bring our Americans to bear on... Europe and hopefully we can squeeze Germany out um, before he takes Russia so with America I bought five infantry another transport a fighter and a bomber and for the combat we're gonna take one transport here actually let's do this here we're gonna take one artillery and one infantry we're going to go into C Zone 5. We're going to drop them into Northwestern. Take our two fighters and hit Northwestern. Take our battleship, go into C Zone 5, bombard Northwestern. We're going to take our bombers and we're going to bomb Germany.
and then I think that's it as far as attacking I really would like to take uh, Morocco back but he's got a bomber here and I don't have anything to defend it because all my US Navy has to go in a C zone 5 to defend so it kind of sucks I put myself in a bad position but I should have done a better job defending Africa but I did not so um, and I think with the British we're gonna hit this and kill this and kind of isolate this he's gonna take Ukraine back for sure with all of his fighters and stuff but hopefully we're gonna get him to move his fighters out of here and move them over to to uh, Germany hopefully we can take this we, he's been getting such good luck with hitbacks um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to but hopefully we can so let's get it done. Uh, this guy's this guy's hitbacks are absolutely amazing. He did it to me again. He uh, <laughs> he did it to me again. He got two hits. I cleared him in one turn, and he got two hits. It's amazing. Uh, we will take the bombers and fly them back to United Kingdom. Our fighters are going into C Zone Five for defense. Our destroyers are going into C Zone 5. One aircraft carrier is going into C Zone 5. The other one's going up into C Zone 3. And this fighter is going up into C Zone 3. All this stuff is coming down into Bello. This stuff is going into Bellow. This fighter will go into Russia. These six units will go into Karelia. Our two artillery and our eight infantry go up to C zone 3 and drop in Finland our three transports will go to C zone 10 we'll move the two artilleries and the four infantries up there for these uh, for these transports to be fill filled we'll hop the sub over to C zone 19 I guess we'll leave our three American tanks there. All right. I think that's everything. I don't know if I if I uh, moved everything, but I'll soon find out if I made a mistake. Because it's going to get... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, because I'm going to have... So what am I want to do here? Do I want to move these artilleries up there? So when they come back, yeah, I better move those artilleries up.
actually yeah Bomber, the fighter, transport, and five infantry. We'll go into eastern United States. <laughs> I cannot believe this guy's luck with, with hitbacks. I can't. I just can't. All right. For Russia, this is where it gets crazy. Russia is going to buy a destroyer and three infantry. And I needed to because I need the extra destroyer in C Zone 5 because he's got uh, 13 fighters and a bomber that can all reach C Zone 5. And in order for me to get it up, it's a difference of a significant difference in defense power. It's, uh, let's see here, where is it here? 13 fighters. Okay, so to 92% battle with the extra destroyer, without it, it's 84% to hold. Uh, that's pretty, that's pretty significant. 6% for him to win as opposed to like 16. 14 so um, I hate buying Navy with Russia because it's a waste of money but it is what it is what we're gonna do with Russia also is we're gonna actually take uh, let's see how many what's our IPCR we're making 15 so making 16 doesn't really help us but it takes away from Japan so let's take away take away one guy Actually, let's move two guys. Screw it. Now he can go with the tanks up here and here. Or here and here. Now let's not do that. Let's just do one guy. Man, I would really like to hit this, but I can't. That's all we're going to do with Russia. All right, the non combat move, nobody's moving. I'm leaving this guy here because once we hit this with the uh, United Kingdom, hopefully it's successful and he won't be able to use these tanks, and these will be isolated, at least for one turn anyway. Till he wipes this out but we're gonna bring we're gonna bring uh, some more stuff so we're not done yet no more non-com and we're gonna throw our destroyer into C zone 5 and our three infantry into Russia and that will conclude America round 17 and Russia round 18 and I will see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 18 the defense on these right now I did the math here okay it depends on if I kill if I kill Kazakh so I'm not gonna do that yet I'll give you the defense after UK's turn Right now, if I kill Kazakh, it's 98% for both. Oh, wait a minute. 79%. Oh, no, because West Russia's done, so I'm not worried about that now because I moved out of it. And Russia's going to be over 100% because the United Kingdom's going to move a lot of guys into Russia. So... Like I said, that'll do it for UK, I'm sorry, for Russia round 18. I'll see you guys back for 
UK round number 18. All right, United Kingdom round number 18. So Germany repaired nine points of damage that I did with my bombers. And then he bought five infantry and a fighter. So now he's got 14 fighters and a bomber on the board. He then took back uh, Ukraine. He took back Baltic, I think. Anyway, he took back all the territories that he lost. And once again, he did not lose a single infantry. He had another immaculate round of combat. So in two rounds of combat, Germany has lost one infantry in two rounds. So uh, that's going pretty good in his favor right now. Um, last turn with the United States, we pushed forward into Bello, and we're gonna continue the push with United Kingdom. We're gonna stack Baltic. We gotta get a couple of things done this turn and then we're going to set up the defenses for everything else. One key uh, note was C-Zone 5. So C-Zone 5, with his additional German fighter, the defense of C-Zone 5 is only down to 81 and a half. But rather than spend money on it, I'm going to leave it the way it is. If he wins a 15% battle, then he wins a 15% battle. I've set my aircraft carriers to die first on this. Keep the fighters alive as long as possible. If he hits this and loses a significant amount of planes, then maybe we can do a 1-2 on Germany next turn. Uh, if not, our plan will be to take France. We're going to stack this to where he can't take it back and then hit France next turn. And then just keep pressuring Germany as much as we can. We'll have a third bomber by, by then to bomb the shit out of Berlin. So, but we're gonna have to start taking chances with our defenses uh, because this is gonna become overwhelming pretty soon. So for United Kingdom, we are going to attack there. We're gonna take these 10 guys. We're gonna grab this one guy and drop him in Northwestern. We're gonna take these five got transports, go there, pick up the 10 guys, go back to C-Zone 5, drop them all into uh, Baltic. We're gonna find our cruiser in here somewhere. Uh, if I can find our cruiser. And we're gonna bombard uh, Baltic. We're gonna take our four fighters and we're gonna attack Baltic. Right? So we're going to stack Baltic. All right. We're going to take three artillery and three infantry. And hit Ukraine. Now that's a 90 something percent battle. I did the math on it. 98% battle. So if we lose this, we have to. This is an important battle because it'll keep. Japan from blitzing his tanks back into uh, Germany. My plan right now as of this turn is to hit, kill Poland and then finish the stack of Baltic with America. Alright, so we've done that. Uh, this tank here is going to go to Baltic also. Alright. We are going to take our four infantry, one tank, and five fighters. And we're going to try to clear Kazakh. We're going to lose it again. This is not to regain any Russian money. It's just to uh, uh, thin out his numbers a little bit uh, and force him. If Hopefully, if we take this, he'll have to use some of these this stuff to take it back. Right? I mean, that's it. Uh, we're just delaying the inevitable right now because he's just amassing stuff here. Okay, let me look at there. So, stack Baltic, kill Ukraine, kill Kazakh, and take Novo. Okay, all my plans were done here. So, let's get them done. Strong, strong, strong. Okay.
All right, combat went uh, as it's been going. Um, we lost guys on every attack, and the most beautiful one was the Kazakh attack, where he killed everything. Um, it is what it is. I'm not gonna worry about it. That's what happens. Uh, okay, our fighters go back there. We're going to move our AA gun down into Baltic. All right, we're going to fly three fighters back to Russia. And then, wait, wait, wait. we got to do this here. All right, so give me the three fighter move over here. Go to Karelia. Let me do that again. Another one go to Karelia. And then three go back to Russia. And then we're going to move eight infantry into Russia. And we're going to move three artilleries up into Karelia. The reason for that is we bought uh, four infantry and three artillery this turn. So if he fucks up, loses a bunch of planes here, we'll be able to use uh, six artillery in our attack on um, Berlin. Obviously, it's a risk. I'd much rather have the three artillery here in Moscow, but man, we really needed that territory. Oh well, because now he can hit with the tw with the twenty seven tanks instead of only twenty five. But oh well. All right, that is everything. So we are going to mobilize our four and three into England. All right. And then if we look at our defenses, for our Russia defense, it's 98.2% to defend, 1.6% that we lose the territory, and the profit is 102.3 IPCs on Russia. In C Zone 5, 81.5% to defend, 16.7% we lose the battle, and the attacker wins. And we make a 25.7 IPC profit on that battle as well. But another note, the aircraft carriers are set to die first. And then... This won't really be a factor now, but once we move our United States stuff, we're going to get uh, Baltic up to a 94% to defend and uh, minus 143% pro or minus 143 IPC profit. So, depending on what Japan does, obviously, if Japan moves heavy into West Russia, we may just use what we can and and kill him. Um, I don't know. He may be patient, stack it another turn, which would be fine. It is what it is. Um, hopefully. Uh, we'll be able to hit, either hit Germany or we're going to take France next turn. So that's going to be it for United Kingdom round number 18. And I'll see you guys back for USA round 18. All right, United States round number 18. So Japan continued the tank buy. He bought nine tanks, two artilleries. He put, uh, and a couple of infantry, I'm sorry. He put two tanks and two artilleries into Caucasus, three tanks into India, two tanks into Kwangtung and two tanks into Manchuria. He then took West Russia, moved heavy into Ukraine, finished taking the rest of Africa, and that was it. So this heavy move into Ukraine did a couple things. The idea behind it, I guess, was to prevent me from stacking Baltic or He's just going to run those tanks back into Germany to protect Berlin. Because he might have done the math, and I have a shot to take Berlin on a 1-2. But this gives me an opportunity, because he has no fighters here. And I did the math, and I have an 89% chance to win this battle if I hit it with everything that's in range. 64% to take the territory. 
and 62.6 IPC profit in Ukraine if we hit it. I said with everything I can hit it with, but that's not entirely true. I'm actually going to use one infantry and one artillery and my two fighters from C-Zone 5 to hit Poland. Because what we figured out is, after I hit this and hopefully kill everything here, I have to hit West Russia, kill everything here, at least kill all the units because bottom line is I have to block the seven tanks from going up here to Karelia. But every unit I kill in Poland reduces his chance of taking Baltic if I stack it. So I can't stack it like I wanted to before, but I still can get a lot of units in here if I use my transports with America. And we're going to do that. Right now in C-Zone 5, we have an 81% chance to defend in C-Zone 5. Every plane that he doesn't use on C-Zone 5 and uses somewhere else, uh, the defense obviously improves exponentially. In fact, the one fighter that he doesn't use gets me over 90%. Two fighters, it's almost a lock that it's going to live. And if this has to live so that I can stay in this game. So the idea behind this move on the United States is we're going to try to give him as many targets as possible to separate as many fighters as he as he has to, um, using them elsewhere so that uh, they can't hit Baltic and they can't hit C-Zone 5. So we're actually going to sacrifice a bunch of units. We're going to sack four transports. We're going to stack, mini stack, Northwestern. We're going to take Morocco back. If he wants to use the bomber on Morocco, that's fine, but that means the bomber can't be used on C-Zone 5 or uh, Baltic. If he wants to, I'm also going to use my aircraft carrier and my fighter in C-Zone 8 to protect my three transports. He's going to have to send at least two fighters if he wants to kill it. And if he sends three fighters or four fighters, that's four fighters less that can't attack Baltic, can't attack C-Zone 5. The more units that survive in Baltic, the better we'll be in order to pressure, maybe crush Germany. The Poland battle is really interesting. Right now, after I stack Baltic, he, he'll have a 93% to win the battle, 57% to take the territory, 41.2 IPC profit. For every guy I kill, that goes down significantly. If I kill one guy, it goes down to 90% to win, 48% to take, and 33 IPC profits. Two guys gets him down to 87 to win, 41 to take, and 23 profits. And if I manage to kill all three, it's an 83% for him to win the battle, but only 33% for him to take the territory and a profit of only 14 IPCs. So that's, that's absolutely significant. And we have to take West Russia in order to block uh, Japan. This is going to be the turn, I think, that decides the game. Because if this battle in Ukraine goes terribly, then uh, he can just take Russia or bounce them all into Germany and I'll be done. So here goes the moving parts. We're going to take two infantry. We're going to run down to 13 and take Morocco. We're going to take one artillery, one infantry, and two fighters from C Zone 5 and hit Poland. We're going to take everything else. These six fighters and hit Ukraine. Uh, this fighter as well. What am I missing? Oh, my bombers. All right. We're going to take two artilleries. 
one infantry from Russia, one infantry from um, from Karelia, and this fighter. We're gonna hit West Russia. And I think that's it. Hit Ukraine, hit Poland, hit West Russia, hit Morocco, and then after these battles are over, we'll do the stacks. Right? Right. Okay. All right, let's run these and just pray for good dice. It's going to be a serious problem if we lose any of these, but let's run them. All right, favorable in Poland, favorable in Ukraine, strong in West Russia. All right. Let me just make sure one more time that I'm hitting everything I want to hit. This is going to be stacked in there. All these fighters are going in there. All right, let's do it. Okay, combat was uh, pretty effing good. Really, really, really good. We're gonna lose these units, but that's okay. So our two fighters are gonna go back up to C-Zone 5. Our fighter figure from West Russia is gonna go into Russia. Our seven fighters are gonna go into Baltic. Our bombers... Oh man. Our bombers will have to go into Ukraine. I'm sorry, we'll have to go into Bello. And then we'll send uh, we'll send our three tanks into Bello as well. And then this artillery and these infantry We'll go there. We'll take the two artillery and the eight infantry. Go to C zone five, drop them all into Baltic. We'll take our units from Canada. Go to C zone eight, drop them in Northwestern. Take our aircraft carrier to C zone eight. Take this fighter to see zone eight. Take our bomber into England. Okay. I think that's it. This is going to be a huge battle if he takes it. Probably the game decider. I really wish I could have just landed a plane or two in there, but I can't. We're taking some risks, but we have to because we're way behind. 
I think that's it. What's my... Let me look at my stacks when I run this here. Alright, C Zone 5. I just added transports, no big deal. West Russia has a couple infantry. Russia has no tanks. Or actually, yeah, no tanks. And he added a fighter but lost six fighters. So I'm going to have to double check my Russian defense. Ukraine has a handful. Baltic has 31 guys, three artilleries, one tank, an AA gun, and seven fighters. That is exactly the defense we wanted. Bellows got a couple of bombers and three tanks, and I only put them in there so he just can't kill the bombers with uh, bomber attacks. If he wants to use planes and bombers on my bomber and tanks, again, that is less planes that he can use in other battles. And then, what do we got here? Uh, Karelia we left. And... Canada we moved. Northwestern we moved. Alright. Alright. Alright, we're throwing our four transports into C-Zone 11. We're going to throw in artillery into eastern United States and one guy into western United States. Right? I mean, he's going to have to figure... He's going to have... He's got some... He's definitely got some choices to make. Alright, we're up to 46 IPCs. For Russia, we're going to buy one artillery and four guys. And then we're going to use one infantry from here, three uh, infantry from Russia, and one artillery, and our three fighters. And we're going to kill Kazakh. Right? Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Wow, that was uh, actually tremendous, uh, tremendous combat because we did not lose anybody. That's pretty good. So I'm actually going to move this guy down here. I'm going to move this guy back here. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to move one infantry. There. And so I'm going to have to redo my, West, my uh, Russia defense here. I'm going to have to do a lot of defenses. All right. Four infantry and an artillery go into Russia. And that is... Gets us up to 18, which means we can buy six more infantry next turn. And then let me do a couple of quick defenses. Because we killed all of his stuff there. Okay, our Russia defense right now is 100%. We're only going to lose three infantry if he attacks with uh, everything he can from the Caucasus. As a matter of fact, I should double check... He can get three tanks. He can he can put like seven or so stuff in there. He's going to have to take uh, this back, or he's going to take Ukraine back, or he's going to take West Russia. He 
Can't definitely can't do all three. Gonna have to decide what to do. Uh, if I look at the attack power, uh, I have a significant attack power lead. I'm still really way behind on victory cities, but I have um, like an 86, 87 attack power lead because he just lost a shit ton of stuff in Ukraine. So I am going to be behind on the shuck though because I just lost all my stacks except for my uh, stuff that I have in Baltic. Everything else is dead. So I am going to be behind as far as that goes, but if I can hold West Russia or Ukraine or both with America, I'll start dropping industrial complexes and start cranking out units. Uh, the only way I think to get back in the game, but if we can reestablish the shuck, then um, maybe we can uh, turn the tide. That was a significant battle as far as I, th uh, I can tell. Um, he can still attack this in 81%. If he kills all of this, uh, I think I can still go... Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Because if he loses all of his fighters and his bomber, if I lose everything there, I won't be able to take uh, Germany. But it'll be... I can start squeezing it for sure. I can definitely squeeze him out for sure if he loses all of his stuff. So anyway, that is a extraordinarily long round number 19... I'm sorry, round number 18 for USA and round 19 for Russia. And I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 19. All right, United Kingdom round number 19. So Germany bought seven infantry, a tank, and an artillery. Right? Eight infantry, I'm sorry, an artillery and a tank. And then he used his bomber to kill my transport in 13 and landed it in Italy for some reason. And then he sent six fighters at Sea Zone 8 and killed this. And then he sent some fighters and one infantry at Bello, killed my other two bombers and my three American tanks. But in the process, he lost three fighters. So now he's down to 11 German fighters and a bomber. Now, he's got his Japanese stuff here, so it's possible that... They can land here to protect this bomber, or they can go attack Morocco and move his fleet this way, or he can take retake France with his Japanese stuff after I take it with the United Kingdom. That would be kind of a waste, but he does have to kind of conserve troops here. Um, this is not really a good defense right now, but after I drop these seven guys in here, these three artilleries in here, um, I can get it up to let's see 35, 9 artilleries let's see 7 fighters, I can do 8 fighters and let's see I can get it up to 89 if these tanks here survive so um these tanks survive then they'll go into Baltic and I can get it up to 89 otherwise it's gonna be like a 75 percent unless I decide to grab these guys from Northwestern and drop them in here which I might do for a turn because it's gonna take me a couple turns to get the shuck going again but we're gonna have a decent amount of money with um, England and we got eight more infantry that's what we bought we got eight more infantry coming in here next turn so hopefully we can outproduce him if we start squeezing him. And if we can punish this, I think we can keep Japan at bay at least for a little while. But now he's got all of that. He's got shit tons of money. So if he starts buying correctly, then my game will be over. Um, so for the combat, we're going to use this one guy and take France. We're going to take our tank, Blitz Poland, and go back to, ba to a Baltic. We're going to take our four English fighters. Our two more English fighters. Our three English fighters from Russia and our eight English guys and we're going to strafe the Caucasus we, we're gonna try to take it but if we can just whittle it down to uh, not a lot left uh, we'll back out we're trying to learn from our previous mistake and uh, but this is a key battle obviously if we wipe it 
uh, that would be fantastic. If we don't, if we have a miserable battle here, um, it could be really bad for us. So, because I don't want this stuff to be able to push into Europe. But unless I kill this, I mean, he he can balance one guy, one infant, one tank, and two bombardments, I guess, on this, and maybe take it. But if that's the case, I'll have a bunch of fighters and a couple of land troops to hammer this back. So uh, let's see. That's all we're gonna do for England as far as combat. One thing we are going to have to do is move this destroyer to C Zone 5 because we're going to only have five fighters there instead of six. Okay, combat was excellent. So we took the Caucasus back, which is really good because now we're going to take these three fighters. Let's see here. That one there. That one there. And that one there and go to C zone five. And now Russia is safe. He's got nothing that can hit Russia. But my problem is I don't want to send these six fighters here because then when when USA moves out, he can use his eleven. There's not enough stuff here yet although I could do that and then have what five no these are gonna move so it's gonna be five and then six fighters against 11 fighters I don't want to do that I want to save those fighters so but I could put them here then he can attack with three tanks and a uh, one guy against four infantry and a bunch of fighters. Oh, these can hit it too. So you can have five tanks and an, and an infantry against four infantry. Maybe I can put them all six fighters there. Now he can take this back. He can definitely take this back with his three tanks. For sure. But if he does, my Russian stuff can wipe him. And then these planes can go to uh, Baltic. And then these planes can actually go to Baltic as well from Russia. Actually, all these fighters can move out now because they're, Russia's not under threat. And he has no fight, he has no air power. All right. So if he wants to attack this, with an infantry and a tank and two bombardments, I don't think that's gonna work. But you never know. Oh yeah, these gotta go down here. And then, where's my transports? They gotta go there. Pick up all this stuff. Go to C-Zone 5. And go to Baltic. And then our destroyer has to go to Baltic.
And then we'll see if we can kill this bomber, then we won't need anything to protect C-Zone 3 anymore. If we can't, I, I think the bomber does not have range this turn, uh, but he'll probably move it into range. So, But slowly but surely, we're squeezing Germany. So, uh, that was a pretty good turn for us. And then eight infantry go into England. All right, looks like our defense will be able to get up to at a minimum 89. So I should be able to put uh, the two tanks there and the USA fighter. And if I put the uh, Russian fighters there, we can get that up to 99% uh, to defend, which is pretty friggin' good. So we'll have to see what Japan does. Um, they may hit Morocco. He may, like I said, he may protect the bomber in, in uh, Italy. He may try to hit Ukraine, or what he might do is use these three tanks with this stuff here and bombard and take this back. And then take it with what? Four, four tanks? And an infantry? And a couple of bombardments, which will probably work. But if he does that... Uh, I'll hammer him with Russia. In fact, I'll probably move everything out it in in uh, I gotta be careful, but I'm I could probably move everything out from Russia and start going towards India. And maybe even into Africa. So I'll be able to hit this with America and Russia. And obviously with this being safe here, I may even move this down to Persia and try to take India back. Or we did, we may just push forward into Sinkang. We'll have to see. But anyway, that's going to be it for UK round number 19. And I'll see you guys back for United States round number 19. All right, United States round number 19. So Japan stayed with the tank buy. They bought uh, six tanks, two artilleries, and an infantry. Then they added another industrial complex to Kiangsu. <clears throat> uh, the tank buying is just not going to not going to succeed. So he didn't take the Caucasus back. He's got three tanks in Trans, three tanks in India, six tanks in Kuangtung, and then one in Manchuria. Then he picked up his tank as an infantry and took France back, which is fine, except now he's got no land units. So these are pr pretty much useless, except he's going to try to mess with my navy here, which is fine. Um, I'm trying to dial in the shuck again. So I went ahead and bought eight infantry, two more transports, and another sub. And the reason for that is it's going to become very clear once this turn is over, how the shuck is going to work. And we're going to start getting, um, uh, let's see, not in round 20, but in round 21. If, if everything goes as according to plan, by 21, we'll have eight Americans in Baltic every turn. And that should be enough to overwhelm Germany. So we're going to move these guys forward take that we're gonna take two infantry and an artillery oops only one artillery and we're gonna take three fighters and then we're gonna take four fighters and the bomber 
and kill this bomber. And that, I think, is going to be all the American attacks. I think that's going to be all the American attacks. Now, we may have to buy Navy for England, and that's going to slow us down a little bit. Um, but we should have 51 IPCs with America. We can buy us a decent sized navy with that. Um, it is going to slow us down a little bit, but at least we can buy a, a semi-decent navy. We can get our, our uh, Baltic defense at the end of Russia's turn. We'll get it up to 96%. Uh, no, I'm sorry. 94%. So let's run the combat on that. All right, combat was good. We did lose uh, an infantry taking France, which we figured that's okay. We'll fly our fighters back to Baltic, all of them. We're going to take our bomber and go back to United Kingdom. We're going to take this fighter and put it into Baltic. We're going to take our two tanks and run them up to Baltic. However, our artillery and our infantry are going to go down into Caucasus. And our sub will come up to C zone 11. Our four transports will go up to 10. All these units will go around. Two transports go into... Oh my god, I fucked it up. Son of a bitch. God, I'm just not paying attention. I'm just not paying attention. I, I, was, I needed to move two of my transports out here. God, I, I'm, I've made so many mistakes this game, it's, it's pretty sad. But it is what it is. I keep screwing it up. Alright. For Russia, we're buying six infantry. Oops. We're going to take two infantry and two fighters and hit Szechuan and that's all the combat we're gonna do alright combat was a success we take one Russian fighter and send him to Baltic Take the other two and send them back to Russia. Actually, no. Take the other two and send them to Caucasus. No, I don't want to do that either. We'll send them to Russia. And then we're going to take nine infantry. And send them there. We're going to take 10 infantry and send them into Kazakh. We're going to take one artillery 
and two artilleries down there. I'm going to put two infantry into Corellia and four infantry into the Caucasus. All right, obviously I screwed up. I needed to move two, two transports from USA here so that I could have another set of four. I'll ha I would have four, four, and four, and I could keep continuously moving troops, but I won't be able to, so we may have to shift gears. God, I, I hate it when I do stupid shit. All right, that's going to be it for America round 19, Russia round 20, and I will see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 20. All right, United Kingdom round number 20. So all Germany did was buy nine fighters. I mean, sorry, nine fighters, nine infantry. Uh, retook France with a couple of guys and all of his fighters and didn't lose anybody and then blitzed Poland. He's still making 26 uh, money. That's gonna change pretty soon. I'll get him down to 25. None of this stuff I think I can hold, but it's time now I think to start stacking France every turn, or at least try to get him to use some of this, these men to actually cost him some more men to take this back. Right now, my Baltic defense at the end of this turn is gonna be 94% because I'm gonna move some fighters from England up there, or English fighters, I should say, from Kazakh. And then when I move my English fleet down to Sea Zone 8 to defend against the Japanese Navy in 14, I'll have a 98% chance to defend without any other ships but I will need to move my US and Russian fleets over here to eight to guard against the 11 fighters before Germany's next turn so for England all we did was buy four infantry and four artilleries we're gonna use those to either stack Baltic hit France again or hit Germany on a one-two if we have enough but he, because he has so many freaking fighters and so many dudes I don't think the one-two is gonna happen for any time soon so I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to hit France. So we're going to take... Uh, let's see here. What do I need? Four transports. Four transports. I need to pick up these guys. Go to C-Zone 8. Drop them in France. We're going to take our cruiser... We have so much stuff in here that it's hard to... We're going to go to Sea Zone 8, bombard France. We're going to take our three fighters and hit France. We're going to take one infantry and capture Persia. And that is it for the combat. I have to leave all myself these notes because I, I keep doing stupid stuff forgetting to move things during the non-com so I started to give myself some notes so these little X's are just oh yeah see so here's an attack so I need to grab this blitz it and go back to Baltic that's why I'm adding so many notes because I just keep forgetting to do stuff so let's run the combat Okay, combat was great. We didn't lose anybody, which is really good. Because then once we land these eight guys with America here, um, he's going to have to use at least a handful of guys to take it back. Because that'll be 16 units. He's going to need to use, um, I guess, 17? Right? I mean, maybe he could do it with less, but if he fails, it's not going to be good for him. Now, we got to move everything to C-Zone 8, and we can't make sure we got to make sure that we move everything otherwise um, we're gonna be in a bad way so make sure that that here all the stuff is leaving the English stuff so we'll look at the non at the non-com summary we're gonna take two of these fighters and put them in Baltic and then the other four
The other four are going to go into Kazakh. He can't hit this with anybody but one guy. So that's not going to do anything for him. I wonder if I, so the four guys here they can if the, if they're here they can still hit Germany if we opt for the one two. I just don't think we have enough stuff here yet to do the one two. But you never know. All right, we got to pay real close attention to the non-com phase. So let's look at the non-com phase. All right, C zone eight. It's getting all that stuff. C zone five. I should have okay. All of my English stuff left. Good. Kazakh, the fighters left. Baltic, two of the fighters went there, which is good. And the Caucasus added four fighters. Okay. All right. We're gonna put four infantry and four artillery into United Kingdom. And that's going to do it for United Kingdom's turn. Again, right now, our Baltic defense and our Sea Zone 8 defense are in good shape. Uh, we will lose a ton of infantry if he actually attacks Baltic. He's gonna, he can kill everything, like every last infantry. But if he does that, that means he doesn't hit France, he doesn't hit Northwestern, and we'll, we should be able to then 1-2 punch Germany out of the game. Um, which would be great. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll see. So that's going to do it for United Kingdom round number 20. And I will see you guys back for USA round 20. All right, United States round number 20. So Japan bought six infantry, four tanks, and an industrial complex for Egypt. Six infantry, four tanks, an industrial complex for Egypt. And he just dispersed the tanks. I, I don't know what his strategy is. He put the... I, I don't think that's a great strategy, but that's what he did. He moved his navy back to 17. And he distributed his tanks. Two in India. Maybe two in... Uh, two in... Uh, Shanghai here. Kangsu. And then two in Kwangtung. Um... So after this turn, I'm going to get some troops in Africa to try to get US, UK some money back and to stop him from just massively producing in this industrial complex. Uh, but it's time to make moves, aggressive moves with the Allies. So um, I'm also going to put, I'm also going to stack, mini stack, add a couple more guys to Northwestern Europe. We've got eight infantry in uh, Paris for United Kingdom. If I can get like five in there, he's going to have to start using some of these infantries to try to take these back. And the more infantry he uses over here is obviously the less that can be used to hit this. So, um, and we're gonna try to uh, push into Africa and take India back as well. So for our combat, we're gonna take four of these guys, go down to sea zone 23 and drop them in Africa. We're gonna take Libya, and then we're gonna try to take Persia. And that's going to be it for America, as far as the combat goes. All right, that was pretty good. We took Persia and we only lost uh, one infantry. All right, so for the non-combat move. All right, here's what we're going to do. We have to send everything from C-Zone 5 over to C-Zone 8. Because we have to protect the, both fleets from the... from the uh, German Air Force. Is that everything? I think so. Let me. I'll double check. 
I'm gonna send our bomber. Over to uh, Russia. Now we'll send it to the Caucasus. And then we are going to take three artilleries, three infantries. Nope, I don't want all five. Okay, one. Three artilleries, three infantries. Go up to C zone three with three transports and drop them all in Finland. We're gonna take the other two guys, go to C zone eight and drop them into Northwestern. Right? All right. Now we're gonna move these three guys over to Canada. This guy up there, we're gonna move these three guys up to Canada. I just gotta make sure that we moved all of our stuff. Um, I just gotta make sure, because that's gonna be terrible if we didn't. All right, so let me review real quick. All right, C-Zone 5 has nothing left that's American. C-Zone 8 has all of our American stuff. Let's see, United Kingdom. The bomber left, went to Caucasus. Okay, Canada, all right, all right, all right. All right. We're going to throw the industrial complex into West Russia. We're going to throw two fighters into Eastern United States. Two infantry and two artillery into Eastern United States. Actually, we can do... Let's do this. Let's throw two infantry into Western United States. What are we going to have there? Oh, that's four, and we'll have two. No, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. All right. Let's just put it all in what? In Eastern, so I don't mess it up. Right? We'll just put it all in Eastern, so we don't mess it up. All right. All right. For Russia, we're just buying seven infantry. For the combat move for Russia, we're taking one infantry and taking that back. We are going to take... Okay, here we go. We're going to take three infantry, two artillery, and two fighters try to clear out uh, Szechuan. And that's all the combat we're going to do with Russia. And hope it works. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that's uh, for the non com. All right. I just gotta remember to move my Russian destroyer on the non-com phase. This is the combat. All right, combat was okay. Um, he got three ones on the hitback, so three out of the four units that he had uh, that was pretty rough. We're going to take our fighters and we're going to put them... We're going to put them in... Uh, we'll put them in Russia. Do we want to put them in Russia? Or do we want to put them in Persia? 
And let's put him in Persia. Actually, let's do... Let's put one in Persia and one in Russia. We're going to move our destroyer over to C-Zone 8. We're going to move two infantry up there. Then we're going to move all of these this stuff. into Persia, and then we're going to shift stack this down here. And we got to move these two guys into Baltic. Right? Right. All right. I think that's everything. We are going to take four guys and put them in the Caucasus, two guys into Karelia, and a guy into Russia. All right. And we still have 21 bucks to buy seven more guys, so that's pretty good on Russia's behalf. We may have to retreat all this stuff here back into Russia. Um, but if Japan, like I said, if Japan keeps buying tanks, that's not the way to go. That's not going to work. So that's going to be it for USA 20, Russia 21. And I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 21. All right, United Kingdom round number 21. So all Germany bought was six infantry and two artilleries. And he didn't, uh, oh, he did blitz Poland, and then he uh, stacked more stuff in Germany. Actually, his odds to get this were, are about a 50-50 battle right now, but only as long as it's going to take me to drop all of these troops, all of these troops, and the Russians in there, and it's back up to like a 98. 99.5 to defend. After I, after this round and the start of next round. So um, we're going to do a couple things to make him try to work a little harder. We're going to take four guys and take Italy. We're going to take three guys and take Poland. I thought about hitting this with my uh, fighters to kill the tank, but he's just going to buy two more tanks, I think, with Japan. So it's, he's going to have three tanks or two tanks and a guy there. And I'm going to have enough stuff to bum rush and crush this and then take this. Depending on what he does here. So uh, We might be alright. That's all we're going to do as far as combat. And then we got to move our all of our fleet back to uh, C-Zone 5. Alright. So for the non-com, we're going to take... Our four artillery and our four infantry go to sea zone five with all six transports, drop them in Baltic. We are going to take our cruiser back to, wait a minute, back to sea zone five. We're going to take our aircraft carriers back to sea zone five, our destroyers back to sea zone five. And our fighters back to season five and that should be all of the British stuff we're gonna take our one lone Brit guy and wait no we don't want that I'm gonna take him and go here and we're gonna put our four fighters into Persia as well That's just going to give us some options. From Persia, they can still get back to Baltic if we need them to. And they'll be able to hit targets here uh, if we also, if we need them to do that as well. So, not really going to use them in India because we won't need to because we've got a pretty overwhelming force here. Actually, we could use more artillery here. But we don't have them, so. Uh, I just got to make sure all my England stuff. So, we got to review this carefully. Right? Uh, yeah. 
Season 8, all the England stuff left. Season 5, all the England stuff got up there. Caucuses, they left. Uh, you know what? Hold on a second here. All I've got in caucuses is four infantry and a bomber. So let's keep two of these fighters. Let's take two of these fighters down here. We'll leave two fighters here in case he decides to come up here and hit this and bombard. At least we can uh, kill his tank and whatever else. So we'll leave two of them there. All right. And then we'll throw four artillery and four infantry into England and then one into Norway. And we're up to 34 money with England now, which is pretty healthy. So that's going to be it for UK number 21. And I'll see you guys back for United States round number 21. All right, United States round number 21. So Japan finally decided to buy infantry. Two fighters, 11 infantry and an artillery. The two fighters he sent to India. And he mobilized the artillery into Kwangtong and then the infantry all over the place, everywhere else. He took his tank and his infantry and put them uh, in India and then he mobilized two infantry into Egypt. And... He moved his tanks into Yunnan, presumably, so if I take India, uh, Japan can hit India with these five tanks and maybe some bombardments. I don't know. I'm not sure that he would have enough to take it back with only five tanks, but I'm going to actually just delay it a little bit and stack uh, Kazakh. Kill these tanks and stack Kazakh, but that's with the Russian turn. Key battle for this turn here, and all I did was I bought three infantry, I'm sorry, seven infantry, three artilleries, and a fighter. I'm going to be one turn delayed, but after the end of this turn, I'll be set up to drop eight units every single turn in Baltic. And that will start ramping up the pressure on Germany even more. I don't think we're going to finish this game by the season's end. After the end of the season, it, re it reverts to custom games. I don't know if he'll keep playing. I mean, he might just be... Just hanging on to as many victory cities as possible to delay it until the season's over. But this is going to be the key battle. So if I hit this, if I take this with America, I can build guys with England and put planes in there. And I can probably keep this factory from being retaken by Japan. And then I can just flood Africa and really cut down on Japan's money. But it's a risky battle. It's only a... Uh, Let's see here. It's a 66% to conquer because I have to use my bomber. If I sack the bomber to take it, I probably will if I do actually conquer it. But if I don't, I, I'll, I'll probably do that as a last resort. So we're going to take... So that's going to be our battle. So we're going to take these two guys and our bomber and attack Egypt. We're going to move all four of these guys into French Equatorial Africa. We're going to take one guy to take Transjordan. And during the non-com, we're going to move these guys down into Baltic, and that'll get our defense up to uh, 99. And then Russia's going to hit uh, either one or both of these territories. I think maybe just one. So this is the big battle, so let's see how it goes. And then our fleet has to move back to C-Zone 5. But we'll do that when we shuffle things around. Let's do the big battle. Hopefully it works out. Okay. Egypt was huge. So he did kill one of our guys, but not both of them. Uh, so that was, <clears throat> that was really big. We're going to send our bomber back to... Caucasus, because I think it's in a good spot there. We're going to send another artillery over to Trans, and then we're going to send two artilleries, or one, the remainder, up to... Uh, wait a minute. 
I want to only send one here and two of them here. And then we're going to take four transports, pick up these three. Wait a minute. Well, I can't load them anywhere else. Load that one. Load that one. Okay, so all four transports move there and we dump that in there. We're gonna take two of our transports and move them back to C-Zone 10. We're gonna take another two transports and move them back to C-Zone 10. And we're going to take one transport and move it up to C-Zone 3. We're going to take our two fighters here and we're going to send them down to Africa. Oh, uh, let's see. Where's the best spot for them? Here? Maybe? Yeah, we'll send them down to Africa. We'll take our subs. Move them back down to 19. I think that's it. Oh, no, 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 no. God, we almost screwed that up. Take our destroyers, C-Zone 5. Battleship, C-Zone 5. Aircraft carrier, C-Zone 5. Fighters, C-Zone 5. Gotta make sure we move all that shit to C-Zone 5 to keep us uh, safe from the Germans. Now I think, oh no, 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 wait a minute. God, I keep messing this up. All right, we're gonna take those two guys and those two artilleries. So now we'll have six and two ready to load here. All right, that'll be it. Right, that'll be it, okay. Fighters going into Eastern United States. We're gonna put one infantry and one artillery into West Russia. We're gonna put three infantry and three infantry in East and West. And we're gonna put two artilleries into East America. So we're going to have six and two again at the end of the next turn. This is now set up to drop eight units every turn once we get it up and running. So this is going to be pretty good. It's right now a 95% chance to hold against everything that has that uh, Germany has. So that's good. All right. All right. Now for the Soviets, we're going to buy seven infantry. All right, for the combat, we're gonna take two of these guys. And two of these guys, and let's see, one of those guys. And our fighters. And kill those tanks. Actually, let's not do this here. Let's just take, let's just take three of these guys and the two fighters. All right. I'm going to take our fighters. Uh, let's see, do I want to do three fighters? Where's the defense here? 
Let's see, down to four fighters, 98. Okay, so four fighters will be enough. All right, so hopefully we can kill this with three guys, and then we'll stack. Oh, we got to make sure we move our destroyer. All right, so let's run the combat. I gotta say, I've been getting really lucky with the dice. So our fighters will go back to Kazakh there. We're gonna move these four guys forward. We're gonna move one guy, actually we don't need to anymore because now he's blocked. So we'll move our one guy down into Kazakh. We're gonna take six guys from Russia and six guys and we're going to move them into Kazakh with our artillery. And then... Yeah. And we'll move one AA gun down here. Because we have... He has two fighters. All right. Uh, we got to move our destroyer, and we got to move these two guys down into Baltic. All right, so now we're up to 99% uh, to defend, and we should be okay. Uh, we took this. We hopefully we'll get this uh, held, and then we can just uh, start squeezing uh, Japan's money, and we're just going to keep pressuring Germany. So that's going to do it. Let's see here. So we put four infantry into the Caucasus, one, uh, two infantry into Karelia, and one more infantry into Russia. Yep, that's it. All right. And we're back to 21, so we can still buy seven more infantry. He's got a lot of tanks, but the tank, tank spamming is not going to work. It just, it just doesn't work. You, you need infantry. You, you need lots of infantry to win this game. Uh, it's probably the most important unit in the game. That is it for USA 21, Russia 22. I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom number 22. All right, United Kingdom round number 22. So all Germany did was buy three infantry and a fighter and didn't do anything else. I think he's holding on till the season ends so that this doesn't affect his ranking because my Baltic defense is at 100% and even with the additional fighter the C-Zone 5 defense is at 99 so we're pretty good there we do want to try to hold Egypt and try to pressure and get uh, India but with the United States we'll probably it might be time to drop a fleet and try to take Hawaii so but all we did for um, United Kingdom was buy 10 infantry and an, an artillery. And then all we're going to do is we're going to put some in, in Italy. We're going to grab three guys and take Southern Europe. We're going to take uh, Bulgaria. And that's all we're going to do as far as combat. And then for the non-com, this guy's gonna go up to Kazakh. Our fighters are gonna all land in Egypt. Uh, let's see, this guy is gonna board and go to um, Baltic. These transports are gonna go there, pick up all of this stuff. Go back to season five and go into Baltic. And three of these guys are going to go down into Poland. 
That's it. Now we mobilize. We're going to put two infantry in Egypt, three infantry in Italy, and then five infantry and an artillery in the United Kingdom. And that's it. So obviously he might have bought the extra fighter to try to trade some of these. Because I don't think, I still don't have enough to do it one two. But I'm going to start doing the math on it because the season ends. If it gets down to the nitty gritty, I'm probably just going to attack it. Um, and see what happens. Because I'm not going to have enough victory cities uh, without it. So anyway, that is going to be UK 22. And I'll see you guys back for United States round number 22. I'm back. I apologize for the audio on this. I'm traveling, so I'm recording it off my laptop. This is USA round number 22. So Japan, he went ahead and bought five infantry, five tanks, and what else? And a fighter. A fighter he mobilized to Japan. I'm kind of curious as to why he did that. But he mobilized two tanks and an infantry into India and three tanks to Manchuria. And then he moved his fleet out of the Indian Ocean over here to 61. I think he's just holding on. There's no way I'm going to get enough turns to get this game done before the season ends. So I am going to try to capture Hawaii, though, if I do get another turn. And I think I'm just going to do the one-two on Germany, um, starting with the United Kingdom, and see if I can get it done. At least maybe we can take Germany before the season ends. So, for America, in order to take Hawaii back, we went ahead and bought a carrier, a destroyer, two transports, two artilleries. And then we bought one extra infantry just to throw in West Russia, since we have the ability to do so. So, for the combat, we are going to take Congo back. And we're going to take Sudan back, even though Sudan gives us no points, but it's okay, because Congo... We'll get us in position to take this one if we have another turn. We're going to take Persia back. And then the bomber's going to fly up here to uh, Baltic. And that's all the combat we're going to do with the United States. Not a whole lot to do. That's all we're going to do. So let's get it done. All right, combat was pretty successful for the United States. We did lose two artillery taking uh, Persia back, but we anticipated that. Our bomber is going to fly up to Baltic. We're going to move our infantry and artillery down into uh, the Caucasus. We'll move this American guy over. These fighters are going up into Baltic as well to participate in the attack. We are going to take... Two artilleries and six infantry. Go up to C zone three and drop them in Finland. Then we're gonna take three infantry from there, three from there, these two from there, and these four transports going back to C zone 10. Our fighter is going into C zone 56. Our subs are going up to 56. I think that's everything we can move. Let me just make sure I have nothing in here from America. Yep, okay. All right, so that's gonna be the end of United States non-com phase. We are gonna mobilize 
two transports, a destroyer, an aircraft carrier, two artilleries into Western United States. We're going to mobilize one infantry into West Russia. That's going to be the end of United States' turn. On to Russia, round 23. We're just going to buy seven guys. And then as far as the attacks go, we're going to take... Okay, hold on a second here. Okay, we're going to take one of those guys and three of these guys or two of these guys let's do two of these guys and we'll use a fighter and then we'll take two of these guys and a fighter take those back And that's going to be it for Russia. Non-com move. Combat was pretty good, except of course the two uh, Sing Kang infantry got uh, snake eyes. We're gonna send the fighters back here since the tanks are now blocked. We're gonna send these six guys back to Persia. We're gonna send the two artilleries. These four guys. Hmm. Let's do one more guy. Actually, really. Because I can stack India. Really, I only need, you know what, not this many. These six gotta go. Fighters can go. Four infantry gonna go down. Artilleries are gonna come down. And then we're gonna send seven guys down there. We're going to send one infantry down there and the AA gun. Actually, we'll leave the AA gun. And then we're going to send these two guys into Baltic. I just want to have guys here so that I can block. If the tanks take this over, I'm going to I'm going to send him here. He has no way to do the can opener. So I just want to have enough units here to block uh, in case he actually decides to move. But I don't think he's even going to move, to be honest. I don't I doubt we'll get uh cuz he can now wait uh 24 hours from now, which would be into the 15th, and so I might get UK's turn, but I don't think I'll get another turn after that. That'll be it for Russia's non -com. We'll put four infantry in there, and we'll put three infantry in Russia. We won't worry about the two infantry up there anymore. Germany can only put four guys or a plane and one infantry in here, so I'm going to do the math on this and see what we can actually... what we can do about it.
and then we'll go from there. So that's going to do it for uh, USA 22, Russia 23. Again, I apologize for the audio and if the video is slow, because uh, I'm working off my laptop now while I'm traveling. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 23. All right. United Kingdom round number 23. So all Germany did was buy two infantry and two artillery, and he didn't attack anything. He hunkered down. Which he's probably going to wait till the end of the season. I have an outside shot to take Germany if I get another turn in. Um, if I do the 1 2 from America. So with England, I bought three bombers and two infantry. All right, three bombers and two infantry. And then for our attacking move, we're not going to attack anything. He's online, so he might actually move, but he probably won't if he's waiting. So we're not going to attack anything. For the non-com, these four fighters are going to the Caucasus. That'll give them range of... That guy's gonna go to Persia. That'll give those fighters range of Germany. We're gonna take our transports here. We're gonna go there, we're gonna pick up all this stuff. Go back to C-Zone 5 and drop them in Baltic. All right? He doesn't have a bomber. One, two, three. So he can't attack my bombers if I put him in Indy, in uh, England. Right? One, two, three. No. All right. Where else do I want to move? Nowhere else, right? Okay. So, two infantry are going to go into Italy. Well, it doesn't matter. I can put them in here. Now, let's put them in Italy. And then three bombers are going into United Kingdom. All right. Now, that, that coupled with the American stuff from over here... Uh, ...is going to give me in round 24... Um, provided he buys two infantry and an artillery, a 93% chance to do the 1-2 on Germany to win and 81% to take Germany out. But obviously we have to see if he's actually going to uh, even play, right? Because the season's going to end pretty soon. So anyway, that's going to be it for United Kingdom round number 23. I'll see you guys back for United States round number 23. All right, USA round 23. Japan bought three fighters, six infantry, and an artillery. And it looks like they stacked up India and threw the mobilized fighters in there to, to uh, strengthen that defense. America, we just bought six infantry and two bombers because we're setting up for the 1 2 on Germany next turn. We're going to use our two guys in Middle Africa to go ahead and take those two points there. And we're going to take Hawaii. And that's all the combat we're going to do this turn. So we're going to grab our guys from West United States. And we'll have to use our ships to clear the sea zone. And then we're going to go ahead and attack Hawaii. And that is all the combat the United States is going to do this turn. We were going to take that extra point in Africa, but we're going to shore up uh, Egypt with those two guys. Let's get the combat done.
All right, the combat went great. We took Hawaii and we lost a couple guys on the hitbacks, but other than that, we're okay. We're going to go ahead and now shuffle around our troops. So we're going to grab our guys in Canada. We're going to take them up to uh, Norway. I'm sorry. We're going to take all of our guys in Finland and we're going to put them in the Baltic. So we have everybody in Baltic. We're going to take our guys up there and put them in Finland, but they're not actually going to stay in Finland, obviously. We're going to use them on the 1 2 to take Germany next turn. We're going to guard Transjordan. Push into Kazakh. Although we might lose that. And let me not forget, move my two Africa guys up to Egypt. And I think that is everything. All right, we'll put the two bombers in West Russia. And we're going to put the... Six infantry into, well, we'll put three into Western United States and three into Eastern. Once I figure this out, hold on a second. We're going to mobilize three in each one. And the two bombs went to West Russia. All right, for Russia, we're just going to buy seven infantry. Got a note there in Novo to make sure we block that so we can't uh, bum rush into Russia. We're going to uh, we're just going to hit Szechuan. That's all we're going to do with Russia is, is try to knock out Szechuan. Because we're going to use our troops to block. We'll back out our 17 uh, Russians. I did a little so, once we get this done... All right, combat was good. We lost a couple guys taking Szechuan, but we did take it. We're going to fly our planes back to Kazakh. We're going to move one Russian into Novo to block. We're going to move the rest of them into Kazakh. And the four from Caucasus into Kazakh as well. And I think we're going to move our 17 guys. We'll move half our guys into Trans and then the other half into Kazakh. And we'll move our artillery into Kazakh also. We're basically dead zoning Persia. And we're going to allow ourselves to take back uh, Egypt if we have to. Obviously, this game's going to end before the season's over. So we're not anticipating the long game now, but we're just... Playing it as though as if it was going to go a few more rounds. And that looks like it. For Russia, we're going to throw our four guys into the Caucasus. And three guys into Russia. We're not worried about putting more guys into Karelia now. Because we're about ready to do the 1-2. So that's going to be it for USA 23 and Russia 24. And... I think we're ready to do the one too. So I'll see you guys back for United Kingdom round number 24. All right, United Kingdom round number 24. So all Germany did was buy a plane. And it's time for us to hit Germany with everything we got and hope we can kill it. 
So let's do that. So we're going to hit it with a bunch of units. Anything else that can get to Germany? I don't think so. I think that's it. I love it. Oh, wait a minute. Cruiser bombard. Wait a minute. Okay, so the cruiser can't bombard. Okay. So let's do this. So let's grab. Where's our guys here? All right. So let's go and do this here. We'll do. 31, and then we'll take two guys, drop them in there, and then we'll take Bruiser and Bombard, right? All right, we're gonna lose everything, but, okay, but here we go. We took an absolute beating in combat. We lost 348. But all he's got left. All he's got left is five guys, eight artilleries, and 13 infantry. I mean, 13 planes and a tank. So, uh, it is what it is. For the non-com, let's take... We're going to leave that guy there. I don't think we're going to move anybody. In fact, we can't because this... Uh... Alright. So it's 5, 8, 1, and 13, and 2. Fighters go into Egypt. We're going to do the artilleries into Italy. Infantry into Italy. And four guys into the United Kingdom. All right. So that's it for United Kingdom round number 24. Uh, one, two, three, four. He still can't get to, to uh, Germany. So he's got five, eight, 13, one, and two. Against 25, two tanks, eight artilleries, and, oh, actually 10 artilleries and a bunch of planes. Hopefully we can take this. I don't know. But we'll have to see. Alright, that's going to be the end of UK. I'll see you guys back for United States round number 24. Alright, USA round number 24. So Japan bought a handful of infantry. They stopped by, or they did buy three tanks and artillery, four infantry, and two subs. Two subs went over here, and he did move his fleet over to the Philippines. 
and then he took Persia, which we thought he would, and then he's trying to do it like an end around up here to maybe go and try to maybe hit Moscow if I don't leave it defended. But he can't do the can opener. So I'm going to take Germany this turn, hopefully, and then we're just going to start sending massive troops uh, east into Asia. So with America's combat, we're first we're going to attack Germany with everything we got. first and these and then attack them I'm gonna take the tanks the artilleries fighters I don't know let's see here I think I have a battleship in here somewhere where's my One battleship, is that every oh no, our two bombers. That should be everything. We're gonna take two dudes and one here, one here. And then we'll do uh actually let's just do everything here. And then we're going to take this back for England. All right, what are we going to take here? Nothing. We're not going to take anything here. Okay. All right. That's all the attacks we're going to do with America. Combat was great. We took Germany and we didn't lose anybody in Persia, which is nice. For the non-combat move, we're gonna move these guys forward. We're gonna we can't move that guy, I guess. We're gonna move this guy forward. Alright, let's see here. Our bombers are going to Moscow. And our fighters are going to West Russia. Actually, you know what? Let's put them in the Caucasus. So he's got one. Where's his planes? Where's his planes? Over here? Four of them? One, two, three. All right. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let's uh, take our fighters. I guess we'll put them in the caucuses. And then our bombers will go to the caucuses also. And then our navy is going to move out of here. Okay, the battleships and the transports can't do anything. But the rest of our navy can move, and our transports that are up here are going to move, and our transports that are here are going to move, and these guys probably can't get there. All right. Oh, let's see what else. All right, I think that's it. That's it for America. Oh, wait a minute. All this stuff's going to move over here. Wait a minute. 
Let's pick those up. Go there. Go there. Drop them here. Actually, no, you know what? Hold on a second here. Okay. Alright, pick those up. Right, this one goes here. Pick this guy up. And then goes here and drops it here. This one goes here and drops it here. Actually, you know what we should do? Oh, well, that's okay. And our subs, and our aircraft carrier, and our fighter. We we'll go that way. These guys will go here. Alright, I think that's it. Alright, mobilization. Put one more fighter out here. A transport. A destroyer. And then, let's see here. The two tanks are going over here to West Russia. And our infantry and artilleries are going into East or West United States. Right? Okay. All right. Russia is just buying seven guys. And we're going to take, let's see here. We'll take four guys. Actually, we'll do three guys and artillery. And let's see, both fighters or one fighter? One fighter. And then we'll take three guys. Nope. And the other fighter. We'll go there. And let's see here. Ten tanks can go there. I'd like to get some fighters there. We don't have any more English fighters. But we have those two. So we can have four fighters there. So that might be enough. Fighters one, two, three. Ooh, you can he can hit this with a lot of stuff. So we actually will we're gonna leave it, I think. That's all we want to do. We're not going to mess with this yet. Wow. Actually, we're going to move these 10 guys here. We're going to move one guy from there. These four guys. There. We're going to move our AA gun back to the Caucasus. Actually, no, we won't. AA gun to the Caucasus. This AA gun will go down there. Uh, one guy will go there. One guy will go there. These seven guys are going to go back to Russia. And we'll take an artillery with us there just so we're all. Oh, yeah, and then these six guys are going back. And this fighter here. Is gonna go there, this fighter is gonna go there, and this fighter is gonna go there. 
And then our destroyer here is going to move out here to see zone 8. All right, that looks like enough of Russia's turn. You can't get any more money with Russia, which sucks. We'll put four guys there and three guys in Russia. All right, that's going to be it for America 24 and Russia 25. And Germany has no turn, so England is up. So England's going to buy, let's see here. We're going to buy uh, two tanks for there, and we'll buy, uh, let's see here. Three, three infantry for Italy. And what else? We'll buy Oh, let's buy some planes. We'll buy two fighters. Actually we'll buy a fighter and a bomber. And an infantry. One more infantry. All right. All right. We don't have any combat to do with England. Yet. There's nothing for England to get back. So we'll take our aircraft carriers out of there. We'll take our cruiser, our transports. Um, let's see our destroyers. And that's it. We'll move these two guys over here. Move our fighters into Persia. And that's gonna do it, I think, for England. All right, so we'll throw our bomber up here in Norway. Our two tanks will go into Egypt. We'll throw a fighter and a couple infantry into um, Italy, and then we'll throw two infantry into England. All right. All right, so that will do it for England round number 25 as well. And I'll see you guys back for America round number 25. All right, this is going to be the end of the game. So Tennessee General uh, forfeited. He didn't do uh, any moves um, after that. Like I said, I think he was just hanging on for the end of the ranked season so that this game uh, wouldn't count towards his ranking one way or the other. He still ended up as gold uh, ranked axis. Uh, and the story of this game really, and this is just to be a lesson, is just don't buy so many tanks. The tank spamming, especially with Japan, just doesn't work. Uh, he could have easily, easily won this game if he just invested his money in infantry and fighters or bombers, or any combination of infantry fighters and bombers. He had total control of the Pacific. At one point, he controlled all of Africa. Um, and because of my, I made so many mistakes this game. My biggest one, I think, was the uh, failure to retreat out of Caucasus. I was so greedy to kill his entire Japanese Air Force that I went all the way in. And what I should have done was just back out and keep my 10 uh, Russian artilleries, four tanks, and that would have been a nice, sizable chunk of material. And then I could have probably made quicker work of, of Germany. I could have advanced, maybe even took India back <clears throat> if I if I had just retreated there. But I didn't. And ultimately, he kept me in the game because he kept buying tanks. So, quick lesson is don't uh, don't invest too heavily in tanks. It doesn't work. 
unless you have lots of infantry to complement it. So uh, that's going to be the end of the game and the end of this video. It's a r really long video. I appreciate you guys sticking to the end if you uh, made it this far. Um, it was a good game. It was back and forth. Um, I thought, uh, you know, there was certain points in the game it could have gone either way. So I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you guys back for another video.